welcome to Global Muscle Radio here at the Pump Media Studios, joined by my co-host AJ, all the way from Norway, Ooh, and Chris Clark from Pump Media. AJ, how are you, mate? Back in the building. Feeling Back in great. the building. We just came from where? We came from Nathan the Ashes. Prophecy Performance Center in Liverpool. Ah, oh, what a gym. What a fantastic gym. That was, that was a good idea. We, that was a good idea because um, we actually, we filmed this back to front today. Because our guest, uh, because of the time difference, uh, we did that first. And then we found ourselves with a five hour gap. Yep. So you said, I don't really want to sit around. And I said, well, we can do the intro, blah, blah, blah. And um, yes, and you came up with the idea. Did we who came up with the idea to go to Nathan's? I think it's Chris and me came up with the idea. You just I, said no, no, I no. Think, I think it was my idea. <laughs> yes, so yeah, so it, um, Nathan's new gym. It's only been open four months. He's only half an hour away. And just as we were about to go, Chris says, "Well, why don't I come and do a bit of um because um." Chris Clark, with his Pump Media website, does these gym tours. And I think he's mm. going to be put on Amazon Prime and some other things. So he says, well, I'll come and do a, um, a bit, of, bit of filming. And um, yeah, so that's, that's what we did. Last episode, we had Nathan Diasha. Mm -hmm. We had Samson Dowdo. We had James Hollingshead. Three Brits. That was a great episode. That was even better than I expected it to be. So if people don't like, like that one, I don't know what to do. Yeah, you just need to go and take up carp fishing. Nathan Diasha calling out Sean Roden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, he did. Um, Samson Dowder seeing he was 300 pounds. Do you, do you think he looks 300 pounds? 305 pounds, he said. 302? How much do you think he weighs? Uh, well, I don't want to call him a liar, but um, I don't know whether he looks a full 300 pounds. But he is, he's a big guy, carries a lot of uh, muscle. The thing is, he's, he's progressing really fast. So there's someone that is... Uh, and as soon as we ended the show, I went on Samson's Instagram stories mm -hmm. and he put out the show where he beat james <laughs> oh was that the uh, yeah. prague pro yeah. last year he put it out as soon like look what i did <laughs> <laughs> yeah. thing is we were like come on give us the because we were saying like oh, come on give us some uh give us some beef. we don't 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 none of this group hug bullshit i want to see some uh yeah come on just build some hype for the june show it's mm. not disrespectful it gets the guys fired up and uh yeah, we got him. Um, we got him. Uh, did you notice he put on an American accent as well when he started getting all cocky? And so that's the old. Now it's the new. Now yeah. who do we have today? Oh, sorry, I thought you were on about a new version of Samson. No, no. <laughs> I was like, give us the new Samson. I just meant that was last episode. People want to see what's going on today. But and I want to say about, we have somebody. Uh, one second, I want to say sorry. I want to say about Samson. It's um, I he was better than I expected because he is very new and I um he's he's uh, he's he's, he's Progressing so fast with his posing, his physique, his conditioning. It was really good to see him really hitting his stride in an interview because he's not that. He hasn't. Well, I think I think the only only interview he's done was the one he did with you at um a pro, a, uh, sorry uh, Romania. Eight hours of construction, huh? Yes. Going home, then going to the gym, mm -hmm. then posing every single day that's incredible that turning is... pro after he saw generation iron four years later <laughs> he saw it on tv he didn't know who 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 king kamal even is do you think you... and all of a sudden he's a pro do you think some guys are just destined to be i mean i'm not saying it's just genetics but it's no it's not it's hard work also come on i know but i know it's of course it's hard work but i mean he if he's only been if he's only been around the sport for a few years, he's not going to have the, a huge amount of knowledge that you would accumulate. Say, like like Zach Khan took ten years to turn pro. Mm. He's going to have a lot of knowledge. He's worked with a lot of people. Now he's working with a very good coach, a guy called Nathan Harmon, and Nathan is going to be instilling new knowledge into him. He's going to be imparting that. So yeah, that's an opportunity for these guys to really take it to the next level. It's never too late, Giles. We can always turn up to be Mr. Olympia ourselves. Uh, but what year were you most um, thought you were going to be Mr. Olympia? How old were you? When you were like, yeah, I just need to like, do a couple more calf races and I'll be there. <laughs> a couple more calf <laughs> races. What age were you were like when you were watching the magazines and, the, like, and dreaming most of it? Like, what year, how old were you then? Well, I, was, I started training. I was 13. I, got, I started following the magazines in 1990 when I was 14, 15. And I used to, I used to cut out all the um, the MD flex muscle and fitness, all the arm routines of Sean Ray, mm. shoulder routines of Kevin Lavrone. And I honestly thought, if I just followed those routines, yeah, yeah, yeah. sets and reps to the letter, I just thought I'm gonna end. I remember I was I was 13 years old, mm. 
and I showed a friend of mine. He was the one who kind of got me into weight training. He was like a, all the girls liked him, mm. Italian looking guy, you know, he, was, he looked older than he was and I just wanted to be like him and he, he was strong in he the gym. He was handsome for you, huh? He was a very, very handsome. <laughs> 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 no, I just, he was like, he, he kind of got me involved in weights. He's like, yeah. this is what you need to be to be, <sighs> an, to be an alpha male. Yeah. And I said, and I had a, a copy of uh, Muscle and Fitness and there was a rear double, you're right there, mate? Just checking my medallion. <laughs> we'll come back to that in a minute. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a rear double bicep picture of Robbie Robinson. Oh. And I said to him, how long would it take to look like that? A couple of months. He said, two years. So I thought. <laughs> That's it. So I thought, wow, by 15 years old. Uh, yeah. I could be Robbie Robinson. Mm. I'm 42. I look mm. nothing like Robbie Robinson. What about you? Uh, so as all G's back in the day, we played <laughs> basketball, of course. So when I was like 15. Oh, lovely coffee. Yeah. I was into basketball, of course. But wow. then I got start more into bodybuilding and wrestling and things like that. So one day during the practice, I was like, we went to the weight room. Yeah. I looked around and I saw this, bar, this barbell. Mm -hmm. So I stole the barbell <laughs> and took it home. And I took it in my, in, in, my, in my room. Okay. And every day I did shoulder races. Okay. And biceps curls. Yeah. Every day. I was fully expecting to be Mr. Mm. Olympia by, the, by year, but I was seven. By, like, in two years. Yeah, so and let's, I went let's on, be realistic. You thought be maybe 17. Ah. Yeah, that's realistic. I mean, I was mm. 15. I was, I was just dreaming. Mm. <laughs> well, for people at home, if Sean Rodden can do it at age 44, you never know what you can do. 43. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I want to talk about how I started weight training. Just a very, very quick story. This is a bit of a cringe story at my own expense, as mm. we, uh, as the, the 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 viewers like to hear these stories. Watchers, re viewers, listeners. Mm. Um, I bought some ten pound sand filled weeder dumbbells, which my sister had to carry back to the car because I wasn't strong enough to carry them. Mm. And I had them, and they were gathering dust in my bedroom. And then in school, um, I arm wrestled a girl called uh, Lisa Tamplin. I hope you won. I did not win. You <laughs> <laughs> and that was the that was you the, lost a girl, bro. A girl. In fact, she's on my Facebook, and I keep demanding a, a rematch. Mm. I was 13 years old. She beat me in an arm wrestle in front of all my friends. And so when I got home that night, I looked at the dumbbells and I thought, right now is the day I start my weight training. Mm. So do you know what I did for that uh, that first workout? Started eating. Four and a half kilos, ten pound dumbbell. Oh, you were a soft. What, what do you think? What do you think my workout routine was? How old were you again? Th 13, 14? Four kilo. You're like four and a half. Four and a half. Have you seen the video with Barack Obama training weights? No, I've never seen it. <laughs> Have you seen it? Have you seen it, Chris? Not but Oh, yo. He uses two pounds dumbbells. Jack DeBarma. No. Yes, yes. Were they, were they pink? It's on YouTube. <laughs> they tried to ban the video because it was so embarrassing. Oh, no. Yeah, two How pounds. Was, how old was he? Now, 45, 50, this was back in the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. I hope The Rock wins next president. going to be some proper weight training. Dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would okay, you? so you were back to with training yeah, with. And my, work, my first night's routine, I did uh, one arm curls with one dumbbell, mm. and I did 130 reps. 130 reps? With the one arm, but I didn't do the other arm. Ooh. So basically for about a week, I couldn't even straighten my arm. Ooh. So I was in school, I, like, I had to carry my school bag with my other arm. And, <laughs> and, that, was, uh, and that was when uh, my love for bodybuilding and weight training and, and I ended up competing and everything, it kind of grew. So, so 90 special. Who, yes. Well, it's not a complete 90 special. We got two, two other 90s. people oh, who's yes. not 90 special. But we have, <laughs> today we have the 90s Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. super legend, even though you've seen RX Muscle, it's a little bit strange since we are MD. I'm not sure how that happened. Oh, but anyway, well. Lee Priest, the yes. legend. Yes, Lee Priest. Yes. I mean, I, I started following the sport. It was April, May 1990. Mm. It was in May 1990 that he went to compete at the Niagara Falls as an amateur. Mm. I believe he was 20 years old. Um, they saw him. When he, uh, Jim Mannion saw him in the gym and they actually offered him, allowed him to do the pro show. He took ninth place. He was a junior. What do you mean they allowed him to do the pro show? They gave him, they, they, they was gonna supposed to do the amateur show. And for whatever reason, I think Jim Mannion saw him in one of the gyms. I think it was Ed Connors was involved as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they said, they, uh, they granted him his pro card because he'd won 
the Australian Championships three years running, but they said when he was 17, 18, and 19, because he was competing in the World Amateur Championships as a lightweight with his mother in the couples routines as a lightweight. I remember seeing pictures of him at 17 mm. competing as a lightweight internationally. Mm. So he was that good. Um, so he did the, uh, the Niagara Falls show. Uh, I think, uh, no, who won that one? Al, no. Who won it? Eddie Robinson was... Did Eddie Robinson... Eddie, he was a freak! Eddie Robinson won it. He was a freak. That yes, was a Yes, because Eddie Robinson won it and then he was expected to win the Night of Champions. But I think he got eighth place and that was the one that Mohamed Beneziza won and Dorian mm. Yates took second at. Mm. So anyway, yes, yeah, so what was my point? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Priest, 17. Yes, yes so yeah, no, he's like 20 years old. So that was when his pro career started. And I remember seeing a front lat spread picture in Muscle Mag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, they were like, whoa, check this kid out. And that was when um, he was only supposed to go to America for two years. He ended up staying there for 18 years. Which magazine did you read the most other than MD? Uh, Flex. I used to buy them all. Me too. So which one did you buy Flex, the most? Muscle Fitness, uh, Iron Man, uh, the British Bodybuilding Monthly, Body Power Magazine. I mean, there was a good... A good seven, eight magazines. I it was. I am. Yeah. Uh, How did you afford all this? All these magazines at a young age. Well, I was a bit part time work because I grew up in a pub, so I used to do a bit of part time work. And um, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, that's. I just. I just. Well, I. I always used to have. I used to buy a lot of comics, but then I, my interest switched from comics to bodybuilding Thank magazines. Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> Porn magazines. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I wasn't old enough to get those. Oh, I used no. to get my girlfriend when I was seventeen, eighteen to go and buy them for me. You. Ask your girlfriend she to go and buy erotic magazines for you so you can jerk off at home. This is a very true story. Poor girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. You want to you, <laughs> share that story you told me at your house? No. When you were... Moving on. Lee Priest. Mo Lee, Pri Lee Priest. Lee Priest. Uh, sorry, Chris. Can we get the, the pictures up? This is a picture of when I did a UK tour with, uh, not me, I took him on the UK tour in 19, no, sorry, 2006. Uh, we, we did a UK tour um, around the UK and I drove him around in my Jag. And that, look at the top picture. Look at, look at the way I've got my arm around Lee. 2006. Like, like this is your boyfriend. It's or? like, no, get, I'm, I'm, not, I'm jealous. Look, look how possessive I am. Yeah, like this is my <laughs> guy. <laughs> and this is an IFBB pro, Sharon Madison. The girl to the left? Yes, she's, I mean, she's, I'm sure she's at least 50 now and she looks incredible. She's still that big and she looks absolutely incredible. Sharon Madison. And that's Graham Madison, her husband on the, on the left. He's a really good guy. Mm. This was in Newcastle. This was in, um, this was, uh, we, we did a seminar upstairs at uh, the Three Mile Inn in uh, Jesmond in Newcastle. This is when I was living up there at the time. Look at Lee's priest's arms, by the way. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. just fantastic. Yeah. Well, uh, Giles' arms been enhanced though at all, like uh, last week. I so. just no, no, no. I just competed the two weeks before. I just done two shows. No photoshopping going on there. No photoshopping. Just a lot of trend. <laughs> 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 so uh, well, I don't. Want, I, I just competed. Anyway, says, whoa, yes. anyway, so yeah. So that was um, that was 2006, and we had a fantastic week um, traveling around the UK, going to doing seminars, and it was such a such a lot of fun. He was such good. He was such good company because we all see the Lee Priest. I'm sure you're going to see it in this interview. <laughs> oh, he's definitely going to see that. Oh yes, <laughs> but do you know what? Once you spend time with someone i mean you spend a week with someone you're driving around and you you know you you're with each other all day long you know and you're staying at your house and your apartment are, are we going to say we did the interview already or is this a surprise you can yeah because we filmed it back to front because oh of the time oh my god the he time difference this Sean Ray back into the stone ages bro <laughs> Oh yeah, there's no no I, AJ. I, I want Sean Ray to come on and give a call it a comeback. He needs to, you know, in rap when you when, if I'm Tupac or you're Biggie or you're Biggie, I'm Tupac. You can decide which one. Do whoever you want. It doesn't matter. Eminem. Oh no. <laughs> Eminem, yeah. Is he the? Let's okay. He's a very <laughs> all white guys like Eminem. What's up with this? Anyway, I don't, I don't like Eminem. You don't. No. You're more into the. Nah, 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 nah. I like devil music. Oh, did you like Eminem, Chris? <laughs> He's not a bad rapper, yeah. He's yeah, yeah, he's good, he's, he's good. A, yeah. Okay, anyway. I used to be a rapper with a capital C. So when you diss somebody, the, the opposition is supposed to be allowed to diss back. Right, okay. So that like like in eight was it eight mile, three mile? Uh, eight mile movie, eight mile, yeah. yeah. So I'm just talking about I'm thinking about the three mile place I went to where I did that. Where I, I was disappointed in that movie. You you know, you know that sex scene with Eminem? I've not seen it. Have you seen the movie, Chris? Is, it, is that where I sex with his mum? <laughs> 
I've not seen it. No, because no, he talks about his mum a lot. No, no, he has no so he's sex. So like, he doesn't have sex with No, his he mama. has sex with a fan in backstage. It lasts only 30 seconds and he came. That long? <laughs> that long? 30 <sighs> seconds? That's not 30 minutes. Twice. Oh, okay. Anyway. <laughs> Wow, this is a, what type of show is this today? <laughs> a, I think Lee Priest has really uh, took us down a few notches. No, no, no. But shouldn't Sean Ray be able to do a comeback? What this, on the, well, like he, a he, this comeback? He can't because he's with AMI. Well, Sean Ray, you better sign with MD then. Yeah, sign with MD and then just come on and uh, see what he's got. Thing no, is, but they got history though. Oh, Lee Priest and Sean Ray, they hate each other. They hate each other. So you know, I'm not saying take any of what is said with a pinch of salt, but um, just bear in mind that those. Two guys, there's no love lost. And they both give as good as they get. So it's a really controversial With, interview you know, we like have later. You've got, you got to watch it. You've got Noel Fuller and Sean Ray. That's that level of beef. Mm. And then you've got Bob Chick and Lee Priest with that level of beef. And then you've got Sean Ray and Lee Priest. And yeah. there's like it's like up in the stratosphere. But Bob Chick and Lee Priest are a little bit more. They're not as aggressive again. It's, it's more. Yeah, what? Mm. That's more like cheap shots, but it's not that yeah. you know. No, it's nothing, nothing like really personal. But Sean Ray and Lee Priest, ooh, yeah, yeah. Well, they were, but oh, it's a shame though because they were both so. I mean, yeah, he says good things about him as a competitor, but he just as a person, they just don't like each other. So there's no, I don't know. Well, well let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> but in during the interview, you were like, oh shit! Oh, I was like, oh. how many times during the Lee Priest interview did he did like ah? Oh. Yeah, at least six, seven times, didn't yeah. we? Where that, it was like, Shh. well, actually, that's better because I interviewed. Uh, if you go down, Chris, if you scroll down, see, this is where I interviewed. <laughs> this is where I interviewed Lee Priest last year at the Arnold Classic on the Black Skull Nutrition Booth, and um, and basically Lee gave us more of the same. It was lots of abuse. A lot of thing is with Australians, it is kind of their humour. And he said to me once, he said, Giles, he said, don't. He said to me, he said to me like face to face, he says, look, he said, the reason I give you shit is this because I like you. Mm. And I was like, oh, because it's sometimes it's a lot to take the abuse, but it, it's kind of well-meaning and it's kind of, he has got a very twisted sense of humor. So you've got to like, I think you two guys are more shocked than I was, especially when we f finished the interview. You were like, whoa. And I was like, no, nah, that's, that's Lee Priest. That's mm. exactly what I expected. That's exactly what I kind of And that's wanted. why people always love him that much still. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's, 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 he's a very popular person on the social media. <sighs> Yeah, I think that interview there that I did with him, that was my, you know, we're both smiling, we're both laughing. That mm. was my second highest rating interview ever. And you, when you, tra you travel him around in England with Lee Priest, how uh, was the reaction from people in the gyms? Unbelievable. It was. Uh, I remember there was one seminar that got, for some reason it got, didn't get, something happened where we had to cancel it, but basically we had a slot free. Now I'd planned them all out. Like I think it was one or two a day for a week, like uh, gym store appearances. And the one that we arranged the day before, um, we drove down. It was at night time. It was actually, it was in Wigan. Was it really? Yeah, it was Wigan. Yeah, it was Hard Labour Gym. Hard Labour Gym? Yeah, yeah. You don't know, know that. that is. Hard is that, Labour I don't Gym. Think it's, I don't think it's, that's still going. Oh, okay. Well, this was around in 2006. And we drove down. It was at night. And I was like, the place looked shut. All the lights were off. I was mm. like, oh, no. We've arranged this the day before. No one's there. No one's going to turn up. So we went up these, um, like, a fire escape stairs. Walked in. And it was like it was like a surprise birthday party. The place was absolutely rammed, full of people. I, mm. don't, I, I don't know, maybe. I mean, it wasn't a huge gym, but there must have been two hundred people in there. And this was arranged the day before. And I remember because he had all his merchandise and his photos. He sold everything we brought because we weren't we weren't what, expecting. What, what type of merchandise was he selling back in them uh, days? It was like t-shirts and pictures, and, and I mean, we were like we were like I was handling the cash and was you this know before and, the internet days, huh? Yeah, two thousand six. Well, yeah, that's before the internet. Yeah, yeah, it? really before yeah. it went really big. Yeah. But, but yeah, and it was just, I mean, and, and the response and I mean, but like spending time, it's like Zach. Zach's very persona. Greg Valentino, these guys, they're all kind of bigger, larger than life personalities. They like saying outrageous things. But you know what? I've spent, I've been friends with Zach for many years. I've been, you know, and I've spent time with Lee. And, Those and, stories to Valentino, think they're real or fake in the MD magazine. Remember? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I like Greg though. I like. Yeah. Greg. I actually gre interviewed Greg right before that interview, and he was fantastic. And I really enjoyed doing it. I, I like him. him. I, I like just him. don't like those farting. Those uh, when you go to the toilet jokes, I find them very disgusting. I, yeah, I'm not too crazy on the toilet humor, but no. a lot of people seem to like it. In I, fact, I don't know why. In fact, I remember when me and Greg used to have beef on the forum. Oh, and I called him an effing disgrace. <laughs> why? Because of the oil. Everything. Yeah, just yeah. the whole persona, the whole idea of uh, you know what it, what the attention it had brought to the industry. 
And then in 2010, I joined MD and Steve Blackman um, put a post up saying about, welcome to Giles to the team. He's starting a Euro muscle scene mm. column. And then, um, have I told, I think I've told this. You've told this many times. Sorry, so we, Actually, we... have you heard my Triple H story? <laughs> Because I can tell it. I can tell it. <laughs> yeah. no, no, Greg anyway. Valentino, good guy. Let's get back to Lee Priest. Yeah, yeah back to Lee Priest. Yes. So, oh, oh. Uh, shit. And you, and you heard our reaction when you saw the picture. Oh. Can you find the David Paul picture? David Paul. Yeah, Lee Priest. These, these are For the, the people most... who don't have YouTube. Now, Chris just put up a picture of oh, Lee yeah. Priest, and yeah. we almost came in our pants. He <laughs> was you see, 20 on this one. We were like, oh. 20 yeah wow. i mean come on he was like, 20. i mean he was like, look at that oh. picture with the blue uh levi's uh that's a that's a chris lund picture that's a chris lund that was at the um the metrex gym in california where chris lund the editor of flex a, a british photographer and editor used to do all the photo shoots i can always tell by the lighting yeah. that's the iron man Two, th the next one the contest front relax that's a 2005 yeah. i think or 2006 iron man pro when he won Mm. Dave Henry was second. Best lighting of all time, Iron Man Pro shows. Yeah. Do you that's that what they say. I don't know if it's true, do, but. Do, do you remember when Phil Heath won the Iron Man 2008? 2008. And everyone was like. <laughs> we that. said it together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. beautiful it was. And everyone's like, that's the best Phil Heath ever. It's like, no, oh, it's the not. Lighting. It was the lighting. Who is it looking for you, Giles? Uh, David Paul Lee Priest. Just put that in it all Phil um, Heath 2011 was his best ever. Yeah. I mean, look at that. These these are Lee Priest's favorite uh, Lee Priest pictures. Mm. <laughs> awesome. Look at that. Oh, yeah, yeah. He actually tells the story of this photograph with the punch bag. He tells this story in the interview. Yeah, that, he does. Yes, he does. It's a fantastic story. These are David. These are, that's with the Hummer, the one, the Humvee. Um, look at that. That's the, that's the artistic side of bodybuilding, I think, is sometimes lost in a lot of the photography nowadays. Lee Priest, man. Chris, you need to start doing these kind of photo shoots with some of the British pros. Imagine yeah. doing a shoot like that with Samson. Plenty. What do you think, AJ? What do you think? Plenty. Or Plenty. imagine Chris doing those kind of photos with, with Samson Dowder, those kind of artistic, beautiful mm. black and white atmospheric photos. Well, without pictures. telling you, we've been doing those behind the scenes with AJ. We've got a, oh, wow. Got is he holding the tire? I'm selling them on the uh, go to gay for pay. <laughs> AJ, no, 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 no. But yeah. Wow. Look, oh, yo, yo. Look yeah. at those arms. Uh, best arms of all time. Come on. You know, I love me some Philly. We got to see. <laughs> love me some Philly. <laughs> no, well, people usually. Well, we'll, I don't know. Okay, forget about Rowley and Phil Heath. Um, has Lee Priest get, got the best arms? I think pound for pound, triceps, biceps, forearms. I think he had some of the best forearms ever. Don't you? Come on. Ah, it's so good. <laughs> he's we, just looking at AJ. Yeah. For the sake of the audio <laughs> listeners, AJ's just like... I'm just looking at Lee Priest. He's Priest's, just like yeah. gazing at these these amazing uh, no, photographs. No, because this takes me back to my... Yeah. Uh, what, That's the one. I've actually got that photo because after he stayed at my house, on the final day, he went into his case... And he wrote, um, he wrote like a sort of thanks for being a good friend or something like that. And then he gave me a signed picture. And uh, this, and this Chris is something you don't understand. You know the, the, the we, me and Josh are feeling now. We look at his pictures. We're like, oh, turns us back. Oh, turns us back. To are, you, you, are you thinking can, back to yourself? Turns us back to our teenage years. I can feel it. You know, you I can, can feel, feel it. it. I, can feel I, I had no porno magazines. Only had body body magazines. <laughs> AJ, can you? I used to have Kai Green on my walls. AJ, just can, look at his pictures all day long. Can you taste the Celtic as you're watching, looking at these pictures? Celtic fruit punch. <laughs> fruit punch. Yes. Ah, there you go. Okay. Is there another photo of um, me with Lee? I'm sure it was, wasn't it? Yeah, yes, when he was, was uh, doing some vacuum ah, cleaning. Ah, yes. This was my apartment. This was this was like a re this I couldn't afford this place. I only lived there six months. This was a penthouse, like quayside apartment. I got it thinking I could afford it. It was amazing. But Lee came and stayed. I'd only been there a few weeks, and um, yes, yeah, so like penthouse. Oh, you had a penthouse. Yeah, it was beautiful. Overlooking the Millennium Bridge and everything on the key. What's, what's that? What, what's that? Yeah, what is, is that? that? What? Go closer. Porn or something. Go closer. I'm watching porn. Are you watching porn no. while Lee Priest is cleaning your house? <laughs> that sounds really... <laughs> For the sake of the viewers, there's a television in the background of this photograph. Uh, yeah. Giles is old. Seem to be Look at the old school TV as well. 32-inch TV, widescreen. Yeah, with Panic. a big fat back. Yeah, it's a Panasonic, that I can tell. Yeah, yeah. And uh, anyway... Uh, yeah, uh, anyway, it, so... <laughs> Yeah, anyway. It is porn, Chris. Seriously. <laughs> anyway, I came home. 
I came home from the gym or whatever I'd been to, and he was there. That's what you see. He's cleaning my apartment. And he said, Charles, your place is really messy. And it, it wasn't, in fairness. It, it was actually pretty clean. It was. It but was. he's OCD when he when he competes. He's very, you know, he gets really stuck into his routine. And mm. But, um, yeah, he was a fantastic house guest. And to be honest, I loved having him. And, oh, in fact, can we, um, are we not going to be able to get that clip away from where he's... Just tell me what episode it was again. I can't remember. Uh, You're going to have to go scroll. No, no, forget it. Forget. It. There's a one where he films me snoring. It's a hilarious clip from my... It was a show I did a couple of years ago called The Tiger and Rascal Show with me and my partner, Rosie Hart, the uh, the pro. And um, yeah, it was just... It was like a Blair Witch, you know, where the, the, the night vision... And I was on that sofa in the background because I didn't realise he was bringing a friend with him to do his filming for his Bodybuilders reality scene. Uh, it was a monthly DVD series. In fact, if you watch it, um, there's a load of this footage from this UK tour on. But um, good guy, Lee yeah, Priest. yeah, it was. And, and like, a, what, what my point was before, um, proper legend. And yeah, a lot of this is a persona. It is proper legend. Proper legend. But I'm saying I. Uh, I really enjoyed his company and there's not many people I can be around for that long, especially in my house before. Where would you rate him as a legend? Legend. Is he a bigger legend uh, than Nasser El Sambadi? AJ wants to get me off this subject. Is now. he a better legend than Nasser El Sambadi? Uh, well, I was never a big NASA fan. <laughs> well, then just turn off the whole show then. <laughs> not a big... El- what? I wasn't, I wasn't a fan of his physique. I was so, more... So you, is it a, you don't think like Big Rami either, did you? Oh, you think this is a Middle Eastern no, thing? No, I think it's more like a free, you don't like oh. the freaky, a little bit well, disproportionate, you know, I some... Like, I like Paul Dillette. I like Kevin LeVron. He's not as big as them. Dorian, Kevin Ronnie. Um, I like the aesthetic physiques as well. I mean, it's hard. I think it's through the 90s. There were so many good physiques to like. I saw Nick Orton from Flex Magazine r- 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 just wrote some... Quick, what's it called? When you just take something out of Wikipedia and put it in the magazine, what is it called? Pinch. It, it, some tr- some troll article about the best freaky mass monsters of all time. Oh, Give really? me your top six freak, freak oh. top ten, <sighs> no, top six freaky mass and think a little bit. John Pierre Fox. As number six? Yeah, I've got a story of him backstage actually at the... Uh... Yeah. No, he was up close. You got to see. Th- yeah. oh, he was. It was a shame because he. Um, he was only really good for those ninety six and ninety seven, and even ninety seven, he had a bit of. A I dance. love mass monsters more than shape monsters. I think. I think they walk into a room. It's game over. Well, for me, the two most obvious mass monsters of all time, and I saw them in the same contest three times. Ronnie Coleman. Okay, so Ronnie Coleman, number one. Marcus Rule. Number as number two. Marcus Rule. Yeah. 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 I would okay. say so. Paul Delette wasn't Paul Delette. He was. He had actually quite. I quite liked his shape. Not mm. as a you know like a freaky mass monster. I think he had quite a nice shape. Mm. Um, uh, NASA. Yeah, NASA. NASA in ninety six. Ninety six British Grand Prix. That was impressive because he mm. after the Olympia where he got third, and then um, yes, he was third at the Olympia that year. He actually got, he, he kind of got bigger and fuller and freakier mm. at the Grand Prix. And Dorian, something went wrong on one of those. Because if you look at the German 96 British, uh, German Grand Prix, Dorian was big, full and hard. But something happened with the British Grand Prix, something with his water manipulation. I don't know whether it might have been diuretics, mm. but something happened and he crashed down. And I think he was a bit, I, think, I don't know, he was sick. I mean, he was shredded, but he came down to like 240, 250. Whereas NASA... Must have, I mean, NASA absolutely dwarfed him. Who do we have on this list? So many names now. Right Ronnie there. Coleman, number one. Yeah, Ronnie. Marcus, number two, you have... Marcus Rule. Oh, freak. Number three. Um, I don't have Big Ramy up there. I want to listen. I'm interested in that Jean-Paul uh, story. Oh, Jean-Pierre Fox. Yeah, what happened well, backstage? It's not important. It's not it's Okay, not so number three, we have, we have Ronnie Marcus... Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, I tell you who was um was a freak. He didn't have the best structure, but was um, forget about structure. We're just about mass, freaky mass muscle. Bautista. It's a little, bit, Bautista. little bit too short, but yes. Okay. Oh, you like the tall? You got to be a proper mass muscle. You got to be big. You can't be short. Oh well, if you, if you're talking about height, I mean, also you got to be a freak on all aspects. Two thousand and two Gunter, three hundred pounds, pretty mm. much, and he had good good shape, good aesthetics, good condition. You I know. got. Come on. Ronnie Coleman, oh, because yeah. it's... All time. Lou Ferrigno, they come back in 93, whatever it was. 92 and 93, yeah. Ed Kovach. Oh. The biggest man alive. No. Coming in. Oh, a young... What's it called? Did you see him at the Arnold Classic? Uh, but I'm talking about when he was peaking. 
He had one when show. He was, he well, when he an amateur, North yeah, American, uh, North uh, American, amateur. He was four hundred pounds on stage. <laughs> four hundred pounds. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Yeah, he was he was a big dude. And a also I put Marcus Zul at number one in that show in the yeah. wings of what's it called? The 2002 Night of Champions. That's more freakier than Ronnie Coleman 2003. Yeah. Isn't it? He, oh. it although some body parts are a little bit suspect. No, because Ronnie was big, that big, but he was also shredded. Like Dory, like, like um, I don't think Marcus Rule ever had know. shredded glutes or hamstrings. I don't think he ever had real proper detail in the back like Ronnie but did. But Paco Batista was fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, 2002 Olympia. The legs was just out of this world. Nasty looking physique in a good way. In a good way. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. The, the but the times has changed. Now, mass yeah. monsters are more like people who are like me who's 35. It's more like my generation, guys. That's What do you, uh, what you mean? No, when we were 20... Those were the people who most of them. Everybody wanted to be a mass monster. Right. Okay. Now it's complete. That's like yeah. a disgusting thing to say. Like it, now it's all about waist and shape. And, and that's beautiful. But Well, Rami's big. He's in our top mass monster. He has to it be. He has to be. Uh, I mean, I... Yeah. Did you see when he came up with those legs at the Olympics? <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, he's. I. I. I like Rami at the. Um, I saw him at the 2000 when he won the 2017. No, Arnold Europe. When he won. Sorry. When he won the Arnold Europe and he beat Bonac, because uh, I I would have had no argument with Bonac winning that year's Olympia. Okay, stop. Let's, let, 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 stop the press. You, <laughs> Chris is snorting back there something. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, 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 Mucus. Why are you always saying this in every episode? Have you noticed it, Chris? I have no problem. Listen. That way. You okay? Let's get it on Phil paper. Phil's stomach was bad that year. So you have 2017. You had Bonac beating Phil Heath no, and Rami. Yeah. How? Tell me how. Hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Let me hear you. Rami, what's your? Rami, what's I your... didn't have second. Absolutely no chance. I don't. I just. I just don't see the flow. I didn't see the detail, the separation, the balance. Bonac was complete. He was solid. He was separated. He was ripped. He had a flat midsection. Phil, take away that midsection, he absolutely destroyed everyone. But that was the year his midsection was not good. Come on. He should have been third. The biggest complaint against Phil Heath was always that he was too narrow and too, too small, no, right? No, man, I was there. Yeah, I was but that there. Wasn't, it that, was, he wasn't even trying the, to hold it the in. The internet right? guys always yeah. say it, that was the problem they had with Phil, I, that he was too narrow, correct? F listen, AJ, I'm but a... Yes or no? I'm a huge... And then you want Bonac that's even more narrow. Yes. To be the uh, Mr. Olympia champion purely, beating Phil no, and Big Rami. Purely based upon his stomach. It wasn't acceptable. And it was, and that's why he lost the Olympia the year after. Yeah, but Mr. Olympia, stomachs is not a big problem. Oh, come Haven't on. you seen Dorian Yates and Ronnie Coleman, bro? Hashtag trolling. No, but you've seen Dorian Yates and Ronnie Coleman stomachs back in the, when they were winning. Dorian's stomach wasn't that bad. 97, yeah, it was a bit of bloke. It wasn't, yeah, but it was. Dorian didn't have a gut. No, but it was wide. His in waist. 97, he did, yes, because that was the year he used insulin. Okay, Ronnie Coleman, does he have a small waist? 98, 99 he did, 2000, it was starting to come out, 2001, 2000, yeah, it wasn't great a couple of years, but I mean... Jay Cutler had didn't oh, have no gut, but he Jay. had a wide waist, didn't he? Yes, he was quite, yeah, wide in there. It wasn't, they called him what? You don't, don't even want to say that name on TV on here. What? what? The refrigerator bullshit, you know, when they called oh, him. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. the point is, his waist were not Serge Nubre. No, no. So no. why but he had good abs? He good, had good yeah, abs and good. But why is all this hysteria about this waist thing now? Why is this all everybody? Because it's an issue. You can't. It <sighs> spoils uh, AJ, Mr. Olympia AJ. for the big boys. It po spoils the picture. Yes, but not so much. That you, but Ronnie Coleman, didn't you see 2004, 2005? Yeah, I was. I was. I saw him at the 2004 British Grand Prix. Yeah, and the waist was not. <laughs> he was so far ahead of the game, mate. Oh, then it's okay. No, but yeah, but Phil wasn't. <laughs> yeah, was, oh, come on. Yeah, but Ronnie was like, when he got someone who's 300 pounds ripped, the stomach wasn't that wasn't as bad as Phil's was in 2017. So when you saw Ronnie Coleman in 2003 first time, what happened? Were you there? I oh, the year I didn't go. I went 2001, stu 2002. Stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> and I was like, stupid. and names were dropping out, guys were dropping out, and I went, oh, there's no point in me going this year because because Ronnie didn't look that for me. He didn't look that great in 2002 because that was the year. If you saw the battle for the Olympia at two or three weeks out, he was like. Ronnie, 280, 290, shredded. And then what happened was, uh, Chad Nichols said to bring the stomach in because he'd been criticised for it the year before. They thought they'd bring him back down to how he looked at the 2001 Arnold Classic, which many, many people say was 
Ronnie's best ever look. Mm. So they did that as a tactic to bring down the stomach. He came down to like, he dropped down to like 240, 250, but he still had the stomach. Mm. And that was the year nobody else brought their A game. I was mm. backstage looking at these guys. That was Kevin Navrone got second. His, his legs were down. Chris Cormier, I saw him get, getting stripped off backstage and he looked like he was six weeks out. Chris Cormier. Yeah, he got third that year. Uh, Dexter was fourth. Dennis James was fifth. Orville Burke was sixth. But n- and the, 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 the For de- people at home, Orville Burke, he's also from Jamaica. Yeah. What a talent. What happened? He's, was it she got. What happened? He too just, much supplements and shit oh. went. Shit, shit to too, bed, is that what they say? Yeah, <laughs> Art Ricardo says that. Yeah. He got two sixth places at the Olympia 2001, 2002. I saw those both. And I mean, he was. Um, he reminds me of Akeem Williams now. Same structure. Uh, no, to be fair, I like the Mass Monsters better. I like it. I just think it's it's because when you are yourself, mm-hmm. like me, six five, six six tall. Yeah, yeah. It's you more relate to it more. You know what I mean. And when I was young, so you're disembonic, but you're um you're you've got you got a problem with me saying that about Phil Heath, who's only about two inches taller. I'm saying <laughs> Mass Monsters is what I prefer. Right. Okay. But it has to have shape also, unless there's no point. Yes. Of I, course. I, I, uh, the nice waist is are beautiful, uh, great, but you can't like. There's a reason why Sean Ray lost to Dorian Yates every time. Why he got uh, Dorian Yates was a much bigger man. Yes, and Sean Ray has a more beautiful physique than Dorian Yates. Yeah, but Dorian only really had any sort of like problems with his midsection the last year. That was that was a close one because NASA and Sean uh, could well okay. have beaten him. Could Flex have... Wheeler and Sean Ray and Chris Cormier and Kevin Ronnie has some more s- beautiful physique <laughs> and Ronnie beautiful. Coleman, don't they? <laughs> yes, and yes. they lost every year. Yeah, I know. Why is this? Well, well they got. Do, do, do you know what? Do you Mass know what? size. I have, I have a theory. Freakiness. I have a theory of why Dorian was so dominant as a Mr. Olympia because his physique looked its best in the compulsory poses, which that is judged on. He, look at it. Think about it. Side tricep. Who's got a better side tricep? Just put a Dorian? record. Who won Nasser or uh, Dorian Yates in your mind in 97? Dorian. Purely on the back shot. So he's so biased, Chris. We got to no, 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 no. Listen, listen. <laughs> NASA was very oh, impressive Ma, from the front. You can't say that. Very impressive from the side, but he was very poor from the back. I mean, not even like like the rear delts, the the scapula, the back. It was there was no lower lats. He was. It's a shame because otherwise he would have won the Olympics. When we finish this episode, Chris, we're gonna put a picture of Dorian Yates and Nasser Al Sambari from that Mr. Olympia. Mm. We let the people at home vote. <laughs> and next episode, we see who, who was correct. AJ, two, two of the biggest... Who's the two best mass monsters now? Before you answer that question, 40 minutes. Yeah, okay. Oh. Go R- another 20. Ronnie Coleman and Rule. No, now. Oh. I, I know exactly who I've got in my head right now. Akeem Williams. Yep. And Big Ramy. Roley. Akeem and Roley. That's my, I think, because I, I, Akim, I mean, he, I know he got ninth at the Arnold Classic, but he is yet to really bring it in yet. I don't think, I mean, he, once he drops down to about 250, he was, uh, uh, what Ron said, he was you 248. You got Ro- as a mass monster more oh, than Big Ramy. Yeah, he's a freak. You're not feeling Big Ramy, are you? No, no, I don't, I'm just not a fan But we all position. know Neil Hill is an excellent Prep coach. Very, yeah. What do you think he's going to do with, Neil, with Big Ram? I year? think if anyone can do it, he will do it. Because you look at Flex Lewis's physique. There's mm. a physique that's been planned out very well. Yeah. Um, I think Neil knows what he needs to do to improve his physique. He needs to bring the waist in, uh, bring the quads down, bring more separation. And I think Neil knows how to train and gauge uh, Rami's physique to make those adjustments. So if anyone can do it, I think Neil can do it because Neil is really, he's got like a really, uh, he's got a fantastic eye. I mean, look at look at how pretty Flex Lewis's physique is. That's That physique didn't come together by accident. And Neil and Flex have been working together since like 2001, 2002. When I was young and I saw the pictures of Dorian Yates beating Nasser and somebody, I remember I took the magazine yeah. and I went to my mom <laughs> and I asked, what is this? Oh, really? how, how can he beat him? I said, really? What is th- I said, what is this? What did your mum reply? She said, I don't care about that shit. <laughs> like, who cares? But I was like, I was fr- I couldn't believe, I was, oh, really? I was a kid. I was like, what is going on? This yeah. is not fair. This is, this is scandalous. Okay. But anyway. Let's wh- draw a line under that. Yeah. Okay. Mass monsters. Another question. Okay. 
Who's Make it quick. The, who's the most? Yeah, he's got us. I thought some porn was coming up there. I, was, I thought he was doing a Jay Cutler. You know when the, the Jay Cutler's house. Who's the most? AJ, AJ. Yeah. Do you remember the Jay Cutler in the house and he accidentally put the porn on? Do you remember that? Jay Cutler in the house. Do you remember when they did the, 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 the it was years ago, about 10 years ago, and they went into Jay, they were filming Jay in his house and he had the TV and he accidentally pressed, he went, oh, accidentally put, I think it was deliberate, but he accidentally put some porn Jay on. Jay Cutler's a good man. He doesn't look at porn. No, he doesn't. Uh, who's the most beautiful physiques you think in the world? Right, They don't have to be the best, but the most beautiful. Oh, right Currently now. Compete. Yeah, two guys. Most um, beautiful. I think Sean Roden's pretty pretty. Mm-hmm. Very pretty physique. That's the only way you can describe it. Yeah. Aesthetic. Um, I think Flex Lewis, very, very aesthetic, very, uh, well, it's funny enough, the two, two that's Olympian right champions. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds like a complete, but that's what I think. Flex Lewis and Sean Rollins, the most beautiful physiques right now. Yeah, best put together, I think. In terms mm. of, um, you know, their, their genetic shape and the way that they've trained for those, for that look, you know. So nobody in the classic, aren't they supposed to be the most beautiful physiques? You I have nobody I from there? I don't have anyone. I don't think Breon's good, but he's not. He, well, he is, but I oh, can't help me out here. Uh, he lacks a little bit size to be compared as a. Most he's a beautiful. good, beautiful physique, but for me, it's not like you know, like when Sean Roden does a front wall bicep, or he does that twist in. You know, it's like wow, it's like it's like it's like a sculpture. You know, like when Flex Lewis does his back shot, you just think wow. You know, when I know there was problem in Phil Heath uh, rain. When? when I was like, oh no, this is not going to work this time. When? When he looked at Phil Heath, remember, at the end, and ch- waited for him to do the ab pose. Yeah. That and was... he waited. Yeah. I was like, Ron, Roden, stop this trolling. Now, <laughs> stop this. Remember that one? Yeah. And he, he couldn't even yeah. hit it. Yeah. That was... And Roden was just like, uh, yeah. It was over then, huh? Yes. Some shout outs. Yes. We're not finished yet, but we got some shout outs oh, also, first. Um, yeah, we'll go to the shout outs and then we'll go back to our new, our trial new segment that we're doing. And we got a little bit in the pro prediction, don't you? Yes, even though the show will My be. My shout nice out week. is to a very wonderful woman, Karina mm-hmm. Cimento. Brazilian. She used to be an athlete, and I just think it's so IFBB pro. You see, what I like is that you can be this. Hot and young looking, mm-hmm. even if you have of kids that are older, yeah, and you're a stay at home mom, and you can still so there she is with her lovely family, yeah, uh, to, for females to look this when they're past 40. Picture there with Shanique, Shanique Grant, that's a nice picture, that's beautiful. That Chris, one. don't you wish you had a wife when Little she one. is 40 with this shape? She's nearly 40, she's got a great shape. <laughs> <laughs> well, then okay, nice. then, nice but one. you know what I mean, like. This is a shape when I, you're retired, bro. I think bro. she's. I always she's good friends with Dennis James. I've seen them like chatting and friends. And Dennis and stuff James knows everybody. He knows everyone. Yeah, yeah. So I know. Is, her. I this know. This is her. a fantastic role model. Look at this, that's... huh? When you when you're retired, bro, and you look yeah. like this. Oh, that's how she looks now, and she's retired. She doesn't compete. She's retired. She's just at home doing like training like this. Liked by AJ Kelly Robert. There. <laughs> <laughs> Spotted that one, mate. No, but it's a very good to look like this when you're retired, eh? Yeah. Because some people don't even train when they're finished retiring. Beautiful. Spiritual, she says. Well, yeah. well, well. Get to your shout out, Giles. Yes, I'd like to give a shout out. Oh, yeah, this is... Um, you can go to your This first. is both hours. Oh. Uh, okay, we can go both hours, yeah. Okay, this is okay. This is Bianca Janse Vens Rensberg. I'm so sorry. Good for follow of the show. She's she does wellness in South Africa. Yep, she's friends with. Um, she she uh, added me and started messaging me when we we featured Sibu Sisu Cotello. Yeah. Uh, the new pro. He was on uh, a couple of episodes ago, and um, she's she's very appreciative of the fact we've given him a lot of uh, publicity. She really loves the show. She follows it. Yeah. She's messaged me a few times because she's switching from very good legs. Switching from bikini. to to wellness yeah and uh seems like a re- she seems well she is a, she a lot seems. of the girls who are not as thin as they want the bikini usually they change to yeah. either wellness or something else because they should uh, not as you see the hips this Perhaps. is probably bikini or yeah that's bikini and she has a little bit too big uh, like hips quads to do bi- to, to place well in bikini. she's got meaty legs so that's i said to her i said yeah wellness is probably the way you the place you need to be so i think she's going to be competing Yes. Very soon, yeah. hopefully, yeah. So she's a lovely girl, and we yeah. really appreciate the support and all the we messages. Do. And also, also when people put share us on their stories, that really helps to grow the show. So we appreciate. A that stupid as well. question, maybe. Does South African have a other native language than uh, this English uh, accent? Uh, Chris, I'm not sure. I'm not as 
I think they just uh, have <coughs> an accent. It's very similar to New Zealand. Yeah. So they don't have no yeah. native language. No. Uh, no. Okay. No. Well. Okay. And this one is. Um, the, when this episode goes out, the Two Bros show, the Ben Weeder. That I hopefully we're going to be at. Yes, you're hopefully going to be at this weekend. I can't because it's Rosie's birthday, so I can't oh. be going to no bodybuilding shows Why on her birthday. Not? Birth- oh, it's a birthday weekend. Come on. Weekend? The whole weekend you have to be with Rosie just because she has well, a birthday on Friday. You well, know, she's my beloved, so okay. I've got to dedicate my weekend to her. In fact, she, she thinks she should have a whole birthday week, so she's already started her birthday. <laughs> so I'm not sure about that. But this is um, a very good friend of mine, Sarah Harley. Uh, as you can see, she's her Instagram handle is Sarah Harley Wellness. Okay. Um, she's also we, doing wellness. Me and Sarah have become really good friends in the last year. We, I, we just, I mean, she's, she's doing, she's is competing. She's doing wellness. She's doing wellness at the Ben Weeder. So I, this is the first time they have, no, it's not the first. This is a tryout of IBB Pro League now, wellness division, isn't no, it? No, she's, she, this is the third two bro show she's done as wellness. I actually judged her. I actually judged her. Um, you were th- a good friend and you judged her? Yeah. She was <laughs> third. Yeah, she was third place there in okay. a very good class. She placed second at the Amateur Olympia last year. And um, you know when you've got different friends for different things, Chris? Can we see a stage pick AJ. of her, Chris? AJ? Yes? You know you have different friends for different things? Yes. Well, this is the friend I tag into all the silly animal videos on Instagram. <laughs> so she's an animal lover. She gets your yeah. humour. Yeah, she gets... Yeah, there's not many Me, people that Chris, do don't people always know. do that, no. no. That sausage joke, you remember what you I said? I still don't We understand. were like, what the Fun hell? For fuck's sake. Oh, because that's her on stage, huh? Yeah, look at that's the amateur Olympics. She took second place here. Who won of those? Th- the girl I, I the don't left? know. I didn't go to that one. But um, she's a lovely girl, and she's been working so hard. She's been moving. She's been working long hours at the uh, the dentist where she works. I mean, that's a lovely picture. I have in the to middle say, uh, Giles, what? wellness is much better than bikini, I'm sorry. Any day. It's much do. better. Oh, wow. Oh, that was a photo shoot she did a couple of weeks ago. But um, Tattoos, do they show on stage like that or are they covered up? Um, yeah, they show up pretty, pretty, yeah. She's, she's a hard trainer. She was squatting like, uh, the video maybe, she was squatting two and a half plates there. Look, look at that. Look, go down to the bottom right. Oh, I think she said, no, I've got, I've got a video of her squatting more than that. Actually, you can find it. She's probably doing lunges with that. She's strong. There you are, look. There you are. Two plates and she's playing with it. Playing with it. Look at that. And... She, we kind of, I think um, me and Luke, because she's prepped by Luke Sando. Oh. Yeah, and I think we're, um, she, 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 she put a few comments on her Instagram recently. She sort of says, I really appreciate the friendship and the support and the encouragement. You know, when it gets hard. You know, the gangster streets of England did not like you saying Luke was better than Nathan. Really? That's not acceptable. Look at that. How many reps? Well, still not. That. Right. Yeah, down. yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, still. Hang on, hang on, hang on. These are James Holland's head reps. They can be whatever rep they want to be. Still, when okay. Nate, oh, Nate, did, did I say like, that? Yeah, Chris, did well, you I say stand, that? I heard him. If I said that, come I stand on, by it. that's what? not fair. Nathan what? is the pride of the UK. Nathan is the pride of the UK, yeah, yeah. and and Luke is on the rise. So fantastic girl. Yeah, what do you think? You should start black hair. Yeah, this is how I because I remember seeing. Let's her. go down to the black hair. Let's see what we like best: black hair, or blonde hair, best. Oh no, it's not her. Even hair is. Yeah, it? that is her. That was her in, in fact, I think that on the left, that was her in 2014 when she was figure. Which look do you like the most, black hair or blonde hair on her? Uh, I think I always prefer dark hair on women. I think. Chris, better. what I do you think? Uh, there, blonde, I think. You think so? Yeah. I think whatever she likes the best fits her the best. Yeah. But no, she was figure for many years and she switched to wellness because she's, she prefers the look. She's mm. little, it's not, I mean, she's actually in very good condition right now. Mm. So, But no, I want to give a big shout out. So and she's I, competing this... Well, this weekend, but uh, um, this show will go out the day after the results. So hopefully, fingers crossed, Sarah. Global Muscles behind you. Love you, bro. And uh, really, really, oh, she's lovely. She's, she's a sweetheart. Love her. Great. Yep, next one. This is uh, Jordan Peters. Who the was- freak. Oh, he's a freak of nature. What do you think, AJ? I met him in Romania. Yep. Proper. F- <laughs> freak. Well, he was some... Um, he was up uh, our way uh, a couple of weeks ago with his partner, Corinne Ingman. She's an IFBB uh, women's physique pro. There she is. Yeah. Is that her there? Let me see, no, 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 Let no, me no. see his physique. No, that's not her. Yeah, this is, um, yeah, that's his, that's, his, that's his partner, his girlfriend there. Look at that at Romania. You were at that show, AJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Eric, there are. she's in the middle. Look at that condition. Oh. She gets, she, I think, believe she won the Nabi Universe a few years ago, and her condition is absolutely insane. But if you've never heard of Jordan Peters, check out Trained by JP. This is a subscription website, and he's doing really, really well with it. Do you know why? Because he's dedicated. He's been doing this for a long time. He's smart. He's got 
<laughs> tremendous following. He tells people how to put a lot of freaky size on fast. All the secrets? Uh, a lot of secrets, but he gives actually his advice is very... I mean, Ooh. look at that! Holy shit! How tall is he, though? Uh, he's not that tall. He's maybe 5'8", okay. 5'9". Five, five, I'm sorry if I've got, like, wrong, but... Uh, yeah, he's a beast. He trains. He does uh, James Holland's head training. Oh yeah. He trains a lot of the athletes. Oh, I let mean, me see him up there. Corinne, there's Corinne. Look at let the me weights. see that picture there on the with the blue background. Yeah, that's an old picture. Yeah, I actually. Oh man, he looks great, huh? Do you know I actually did a photo? I did a video shoot for MD with him back in 2012, and they never used it. Why not? I don't know because he was he was doing like this. He was training with this um, power. Well, lifter. let us see what he can lift there. Yeah, let's see what he can bring. Oh, it's ridiculous. Ridic look at that. What are they like? Two hundred pound dumbbells. Let's see what he's got. Yeah, for the sake of the audio listeners, this is Jordan with these dumbbells that look about a meter long. Look like the two two hundred pounds. I mean, pounds. look at that at least. Two hundred pounds. Whoa. Let's see how. Um, let's say it's two hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit! Look at that. <laughs> it's like they must be two hundred, two hundred, two twenty. Does it say on the? Does it say on the thing? So anyway. Anyway. Yeah, so big luck, because yeah, he took, um, I think he took second at one of the NPC, was it the, it was one of, was it the Two Bros show last year he took second? He didn't, he didn't get his pro card, um, but he is very, very hungry to get his pro card. He's, he's still only about, I mean, he was a junior. He's not that old, he's like 30 maybe? He was a junior in 2009, so he's going to be around 30, 31. So him, mm. James Hollinshead, Luke Sando, they're all kind of 30, 31. 90, Who's the 90, crew? Sorry, 95 kgs those. Whoa! That's so he's he's part of is it Luke is it Luke James and him is like a crew? Yeah. And Nathan is not with that crew. No, it's, they're they're in the southeast. Okay. Nathan's in the northwest. And so Samson is also not part of that crew. Uh, Samson's Colchester, which is Essex, which is um, kind of the south. And what southeast. about Jamie the Giant? Jamie the Giant is Nottingham, who's kind of the north okay. northeast. So everyone's kind of very scattered, but they. Um, yeah, and also I'd like to let's give my next shout out, my final shout out. I'd like to give to Banji Demeji. Ban I heard that name many times. I'm not sure who it is, but well, I'll explain. Banji is um, he's competing in the super heavyweights at the Two Bros Ben Weeder Cla okay. Ben Weeder Classic. Um, he's the one who started the Size Game podcast. Oh, the Jamaican, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's a fantastic guy. Amazing personality. Mm. I've been going on his podcast. Zuki. Is it, is it no, Zuki? No, 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 that's a different no. guy. Banji. There's Banji there. There's Banji. Yeah, look at, his, look at his back shots there. That's recent. That's well, this recent. is his first try, isn't it? No, I'm mistaken. What do you mean first try? Not his first show. No, he's competed. He hasn't competed for a few years. Oh, yeah. But um, he has a... Um, wow, look at that back. Yeah, he has an IT job, but he runs the Size Game podcast. And he's been running this for three or four years. Oh, yeah, he's the funny guy, Yeah, look, yeah there's a Size Game. He's the guy who's the funniest, isn't it? Yeah, he's really... He's, he's one of these guys who's really naturally funny. Yeah. But um, he's kind of... Um, he's been hiding himself away the last few years. And uh, I think we're all looking forward to oh, Mark Hector competing with him. I, li to... I like Mike Hector, by the way. He's, yeah, he's got a great physique. Yeah. Great physique. But they do a good job. Like, you know, like ourselves, we do a good job of uh, um, really going out of our way to promote the all athletes of all over the world. They've had Evan Centopani on there. They have all the, they've had some big names on that podcast. Mm. And um, they are, look, there's Aaron Singerman. There's uh, Ian Valier. The... There's another one. You probably see me going down if you go down a bit more. Maybe. I don't know if you want to. <laughs> but uh, yeah he's a big guy and um it's funny because the three of them there's luke sando james holland said and banji mm -hmm. and now they have jamie the giant so there's there's paul is that you and paul knight isn't it yeah 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 there's me yeah there's, yeah there's me pulling stupid face from the olympia that was taken outside the olympia that was and there's paul knight the judge yeah awesome pick chaps ha 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 <laughs> i had no idea i was so handsome this changes everything now so Written by Giles Tag. I don't know who that is. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I always had a good time, but they do a good job. And, um, yeah, I really want to wish him the very best of luck uh, last weekend. <laughs> so, come on, AJ, any more shout outs before we wrap yeah, up, mate? Yeah, Chris uh, has one. He never gets a shout out. He had one. Oh, come on then, Chris. Jesse the Body Ventura. <laughs> He wants to give a shout out to Jesse the Body Ventura. I've not, got, I've not got a picture of him, but I'll put, I'll put You don't have a picture of him. You're going to give a shout out. You don't even have a picture of Jesse the, bo oh. the Body. With a name is as that, the. I ain't got no time to bleed. Is that the one? Uh, is it? I've Jesse from that. Predator. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah thank yeah, you, yeah, thank yeah. you. I, I was, uh, I was looking at this one some, when we did the Sergio Olivier Jr. Oh, okay. And I, I was under the impression that he might have taken the mm -hmm. part of 
Jesse Ventura, sorry, the, the part of uh, Sergio Olivia Jr.'s father's part in uh, The Predator. Show a picture when he was in yeah. his peak. I'm though. sorry, I'm confused. I've, I've well, his, his father was going to be in The Predator with... Um, Remember? With Arnold, remember? Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Turned yeah, yeah, it yeah. down. It wasn't enough money. It wasn't uh, enough money? Oh, no. So he got it. So uh, I think uh, oh. he was the guy that replaced him. Do you think? Mm. Oh, wow. But, Isn't uh, that funny? Pro, I think pro, pro wrestler. Uh, For the people who like wrestling, he's the best commentator of all time with Bobby Heenan. You know the brain? Give me one of his phrases. No, it's just the way it's it, it's everything. He, the, every, <laughs> no, no, he's such a. You remember those how he was dissing people? Oh, the body, and, and he's and after that he's made some. He's he's become popular with what's it called? He's a like, conspiracy theory. Conspiracy theory. Uh, oh, is he? Is he's, he? He's, he's living off the grid as we speak. Off yeah. the, what? In like in a cabin or no? In uh, in Mexico. He was uh, the first guy to to when when nine eleven happened. Right. To start asking a lot of questions but about. Similar, it. Didn't say similar, it's a hologram, did he? Similar to. Uh, I don't know what it is. Is I haven't I hate followed all that shit. It. I hate similar all to that. Arnold, he became uh, governor of Minnesota. Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, wow. then, and then decided to become a conspiracy theorist. Do you believe in those conspiracy theories? Or do you think it's just trolling? <sighs> oh, bollocks. He made a series and made some very compelling... No. Yeah, he made a series. <laughs> YouTube, a, let me guess. YouTube. No, no, no. It was a, it was a no, series it was a show. It was on American TV. Uh, really? three, three series long, six oh, episodes each. I find those things very biased. Because they're trying to... I have to look at evidence not on YouTube before to make any mind on anything. Yeah. You know it's like, I mean, I mean uh, Flex Lewis got me watching Making a Murderer. On what Netflix, is that? Netflix, yeah. the uh, Steve Avery, the the murder case, yeah. and I watched. Me and Rosie watched the whole ten episodes, and we we're like, "Oh my god, this is a total fit up." I watched one documentary showing other side, because these aren't really biased thing. They're wanting to create a story. I watched it, and there was some huge, vital part of evidence they left out of the series that basically said, "Yeah, he did it." And by the way, this is <clears throat> our first episode ever we're gonna have females on the show yes women ladies and, and be honest who's fighting most for that who aj why don't we have any females on well like, they're trained they they look some of them look huge hey, what did i say to you in the car today when we're going to nathan's gym we're gonna get some girl freaks on yeah get them on show um give them an opportunity to yeah just show them some love and Get them on. So let's see who we got for you guys later. Yes, we have two. 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 Okay. Can you guess who? Okay. Uh, we're one hour now, so I think we need yeah. to wrap it up. So, uh, yeah. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Yeah. Big. So yes. Okay. Um, there's nothing else to cover. Is there nope. Right? Yep. Well. Indie we'll Pro, quick. Who's your winner? Uh, I forgot who's doing it. I got Luke. Big Luke Sandow was the winner. Luke Sandow, yeah. And I'd love to. I, I'm or Kuklo. Cool yeah. Or Akeem. <laughs> Luke Sandow, but I'm really excited to see if. Akim has pulled it in from the Arnold and dropped down to 250. Is it Hakim or is it Akim, the way you say it? Akim. It's Akim, isn't it? I don't know. I think it's... Can I just ask, are we throwing this video of uh, Nathan's gym in now or afterwards? We're going to show that uh, later on in the episode because okay. this is... Um, yeah, we, yeah. We explained at the start, didn't we? we? It's a longer intro than normal, but uh, I think we'll be able to throw it in, yeah. in between guests. Yeah, in between guests. It's yeah. like a little... Uh, I, I, also, if anyone... Anyone wants us to do these kind of gym things, and it's uh, and we're able to do them. And if we're in the area or whatever, and Nathan uh, takes his tank top off, oh, shows yeah, us the muscle. Yeah, yeah, two eighty, two eighty, two hundred eighty-three pounds. This this first week of dieting, only diets eight or nine weeks. Doesn't need more. He's a freak. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So I hope he hasn't left it like Roly did Ugh. for the Arnold. He only ate, left himself eight weeks, and he didn't have enough time. Well, at least he said Roly was the hardest worker guy he ever saw. He did. Yeah, crazy, mm -hmm. crazy work ethic. He said. Yes. Okay, right, we will be, um, yes. Um, yes, this is our intro done, and we will be back after the commercial break with the sensational, the controversial. Maybe you got to check if she's answered first. Lee, Pr <laughs> Lee Priest. Oh, oh <laughs> Come Giles on. Is, Giles is very good friend. Lee Priest. Giles is very good friend. Yeah, building. that's a bit of a private joke. You'll soon find out why. And we will be right back after the break with Lee Priest. And we are out. Out.
and welcome to Global Muscle Radio with me, Giles Thomas, here at the Pump Media Studios, joined by my co-host, AJ, all the way from Norway, and we are joined by my very good friend, Lee Priest, the legend. Uh, <laughs> your, your, your good friend that when I was suspended, you didn't talk to for years. Yeah, really fucking good friend you are, mate. Did I? <laughs> you didn't talk to me for years when I was suspended. Did I fuck? Good fucking, good fucking friend. Oh, what, hey, I spent a week what, driving. Did Steve, I, did, Steve, did Steve Blackman say, don't talk to Lee Priest, he's no longer with the MD magazine? I wasn't with MD <laughs> then. I was, actually with, I was actually with Flex magazine at the time, so there you go. Yeah. Well, of course uh, I wasn't with the IFBB, you couldn't talk to me. Yeah, good fucking friend. No, I wasn't. Hey, I, spent a week <laughs> I spent a week driving you around in 2006, and all you did was, was take... Uh, I'm yeah, that's right. That's when we became friends and I cleaned your apartment, but I'm talking about... <laughs> And all I did, all he did was when take. I, when I got suspended from the IFBB, when was that? How often did you talk to me? What year? Never. What year? What year did I get suspended? Oh six. Oh six. Well, that's the yeah. year I spent the week driving you around the country, and all he did was take the piss out of my driving. I got suspended for life. I was I wasn't suspended when you drove me around the country. No, you're with the. That was with your PDI <coughs> days, wasn't it? Yes, and then I got suspended, and you never spoke to me. I did speak to you. I used to email you quite... I, I used to speak to you. I, I, you know, I probably still got the email. Charles, is this true? No, it's not true oh, at all. That's true. He's that's giving me shit. True. He's giving me shit. True. He never spoke to me for years until I bumped yes. into him, I think, at an expo somewhere, and we said hello. But it was probably from 06 I got suspended, so it would have been 07, 08, 09, 010, 011, 012. I did the university in 013. 13. Still haven't spoken to Giles. 0, 14, 15, still haven't spoken to Giles. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. not buying that. Well, I, was with, I, start, well, I started with MD in 2011, so, yeah, there you go. <laughs> anyway, Lee, all aside, yeah. ha, ha, how the devil are you, mate? Oh, you should know, you're my good friend. We speak very <laughs> I can see how this interview is going to go. I think it's. Just, I think the last. Well, first of all, yep. Sorry, this is AJ. Yeah, we're really happy to have you on, Lee Priest. You're like, you, you, yeah. Now you, you can be my friend. AJ. <laughs> not like, not no, like fucking, not like Tommy fucking Two Face over there. Uh, it's oh, okay. you, you. We have a lot of legends he's the, on. He's the, he's the fucking. He's the fucking Piers Morgan of bodybuilding. That job. Piers Morgan. Oh. oh. Someone call oh, the fire brigade. I've got burned. Pierce Morgan of Biden. Pierce Morgan. Oh. That is bad. That's really... Come on, you need to dial yeah. it back a bit. That's Lee. bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we're happy to have you on because you're right. definitely one of the biggest legends we ever had on and and of all time. So we're honored to have you on, Lee Priest. Yeah, I think he's the first first, yeah. first big legend. name. Yeah. Well, legend, well, legend, legend... Legend just means I'm old, so thank nah, you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, come on, AJ, throw some questions at Lee because he's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go and uh, lick my wounds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. AJ, bro, AJ, 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 AJ knows more about me. Than you, so go ahead now. Come no, on, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great seeing you. You, you. We're great seeing you also on the. <laughs> On the, on the other channel, you're really. Po it's great to see that even now after retirement, that you're still more relevant and so popular and in demand as you ever been. You know, it's really nice to see. Well, I always, I always read on the internet, so I'm not, I'm not relevant anymore, which is quite funny because, like you said, all the people that say that I'm not relevant, they keep fucking talking about me. So they must be, <laughs> I must be doing something yeah, wrong because they, they, they keep talking and keep posting. And you know what I used to like was though, the funniest things was when. Somebody would start a thread on the MD forums about me, and the thread would get really big. The MD thread would take it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but no, we spoke last year at the Arnold Classic, and um, you spoke about how your trainee you said you had some nerve damage from a car accident. Do you want to tell us about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, still got it. It's been about four years now, so it's just been going on. I had one operation after the accident, but it didn't work, and then. Since then, it's been Black Skull promising to get another operation done. It's been other people promising to get stem cell. And it's just been four years of going back and forth between doctors, lawyers, and insurance companies. So really, the, the problem hasn't got any better. So, but there's been a lot of promises, but nothing getting done. So how is it affecting your training? Because you said it was just on the one side. Was that Did you hit something in yeah, the car? Yeah, because um, yeah, when the car accident happened, it crushed my C7 nerve, and that sort of controls my tricep on this side, the chest right. and the back. So... Got a bit of atrophy in the muscles there, so it'd be like if I'm training, it'd be similar. I've never had a stroke, but it'd be like having a stroke because if I'm doing something with this arm and my mind's thinking push the weight, 
mm. this arm's not really pushing it. You know, this arm will go straight up. This arm sort of struggles. So if I was doing chest, I might have a 60 kilo here and a 25 kilo this arm. So yeah. I just tell people I'm working my core. That's why I got different weights. <laughs> so, yeah, because, I mean, you've had, um, yeah, I mean, you love to train. And that I, I can imagine that has been quite stressful for you. Very, because I said, you, when you can't do what you want to do, I still go. For a while, I actually didn't go to the gym. I just stayed home, but then I got depressed doing that. Yeah. So I decided to go to the gym. But even though when you can't train, you still get depressed. But at least I figure, well, at least I'm trying to do something, keep the blood moving and stuff yeah. like that. But now to work out, for the last four years, the workouts have sucked. But, you know, I figure my worst workout's probably still better than your best one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, the thing is that you still love doing the NASCAR. Was the was that just a general car accident, actually, or were you, you doing... Actually, do you actually do you actually train anymore, Giles? I what? do train. I'm actually 300 pounds ripped. I can see you there with the suit on. You're not 300 pounds <laughs> ripped, and your hair's fitting. So, oh. that, uh, for a moment, for a moment, then when I saw you with the hair fitting and the suit, on, I actually thought you might have just finished off your last round of chemo or something. Oh. <laughs> Over to you, AJ. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we knew oh. what we were going to AJ, we knew what we were going to get with with uh, with Lee. He's, he's, he's delightful. Yeah. Uh, no, are you still with Black Skull? I, this is, I, I've worked it out now. AJ, a, I've worked it out. Giles hasn't talked to me. AJ set this up because this is like fucking make a wish, isn't it? You're <laughs> lying, you silly cunt. Now AJ set it up so you can talk to me. Ah, I worked it out. Fucking make a wish for Giles. Make a wish? <laughs> no, come on. No, no, no. It's good job I know, Lee. This Olympia, Lee Priest, did you, uh, back to bodybuilding, did you agree with the results? Uh, what, 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 the last with, Olympia? No, this on. one here with Sean Roden yeah. winning, beating Phil Heath. And do you think Sean Roden is... Yeah, I think so. Well, I, I only went by the pictures, but going by the pictures, you know, Phil was blowed and stuff like that. If, like I said, if Phil had a one, people probably wouldn't have complained. They would have just said, oh, Phil won, but he was bloated and... Sean should have won. Then when Sean wins, they say, well, Sean looked great, but he still didn't have that sort of mass that Phil had. So the only one that's going to be happy is always the winner. So it's like, yeah, whatever. But could have gone either way, really. But I think that last year, Phil's stomach was probably the biggest it's been. So, hmm. But are you investing? You can probably think, honey. Are you, What's that? are you following the modern scene, bodybuilding? Are you interested in it still? Or do you just watch it to keep you updated? Or... Do you do you find any like do you get motivated by them at all or do you do you do you like what's going on? <laughs> Boring as shit. Boring as shit. You know, I, I respect the guys that do it. You know, but as far as the bodybuilding goes, I just don't find it interesting. I don't know. People, like I said, I gave interviews before, and people say when you talk about the '90s being the best era, with like Kevin Leverone and yeah. Flex Wheeler and Chris Cormier and Nasser El Body and Dorian and Sean Ray and all these people. To me, they were the best years, and people say, that's just because you were in it, Lee. I said, well, even take me out of it. If I step out of that lineup, still all those guys, to me, those lineups were greater than the lineups are today. That's not taking anything away from the guys today, but you might have a lineup where you might have a good Ruley Winkler and mm. Phil Heath and stuff like that, but then after the top four guys, there's really, I don't want to say second-tier pros because they're still good, but back in the other days, every pro on stage, Kevin, Flex, Chris, yeah. Paul Dillett, they all had that wow factor. You looked at them and you went, oh, fuck, wow, look at that. Whereas these other guys have good physiques, but they still don't have that real, you know, to me it was like when you saw a pro back in the day, you knew that guy was a pro. Yeah. Now now to know someone's a pro, they've got to put IFBB pro in their fucking Facebook profile and shit like that because if you've got to tell people you're a pro, well, you got problems. Whereas mm. back in the day, you could look at them and you knew they were a pro, but... I don't know, I don't really follow it as much. I'll see it, like I said, on Instagram, a picture will pop up and stuff like that. I'll have a look at pictures and, you know, I went to the Arnold Classic in Australia and saw that there live, but no, I don't really follow it like I used to. Mm. Well, how would, how was the Arnold Australia? How did you find that? Uh, it was okay. Could have gone either way there with Cedric or um, Bonac, you know. Bonac had, like, it probably looks a little bit thicker because he's more compact, but yeah. I think Cedric looked pretty good with his lines and small waist and stuff like that, so... Mm -hmm. Again, could have, you know, like I said, bodybuilding's really based on opinions and shit, you know. Yeah. You can't really say you're always the best man wins on the day because all these judges have an opinion of who they think should win and then mm. different shows, you know, they're told who's going to win. Yeah. Did, did you see after the, uh, well, I checked the judging sheets and um, J Bonac was third in the second round and Josh was second and Cedric was first. And then it kind of... It all kind of went reversed for the for the night show, and obviously uh, William Bonnet won. But Josh was second. 
Yeah, and I think I would have had Josh second. When I was watching the show, I would have had him fourth or fifth around that area. Mm. He's in, like, maybe even fifth type thing. But, you know, like I said, Josh is a big guy, big frame and stuff, but he doesn't have that real depth and 3D look that the other guys carry and stuff like that. So it's yeah. like, you know, it's like I said, you're going to have guys that are freaky pros and the top 1% pros than you have. It's like even in basketball, you can have the Michael Jordans, the... Kobe Bryant's and stuff like that. That's not saying the other basketballers aren't good, but you've always got those standout guys that are always going to rise to the top and just have that wow factor to them in all sports. And like I said, all the guys who get up on that stage are great, but the ones who have the wow factor to them, it's just like, you know, it's night and day to the other guys. Yeah. Uh, what would you, a lot of you uh, retired guys say you're not that impressed by the current scene. What would you do if you were the IBB Pro League to two changes to make the scene more interesting or more... Uh, what can I say? More that you get more pumped about it. What would you do to change it? More nineties. <laughs> I would have, like I said, pulled it in the guts years ago. You know, because yeah. I always talked about it when I was competing that if somebody had a bloated stomach, they would have marked them down, and they never did. Oh, what well, I did for some people, but not others. And then they said the guts just got out of control mm. and got bigger and bigger. They never pulled in. Whereas, remember the women's bodybuilding, they got bigger and bigger. They told a lot of women to lose 20% of muscle. Some women did. Mm -hmm. They still awarded it to the big girls, and then they just destroyed the sport, and slowly they're going to do the same to the men. Like People wonder why classic and physiques, you know, a lot of people hate the physique because they wear the board shorts and the classical, but more guys can relate to that rather than looking at these guys. Like I said, I respect anyone who's freak with muscle, but to me, they're looking like just big, like big fucking bloated powerlifters in shape because... You know, back in my day, we'd get in shape. He had a poor Dillett, massive guy, but he still had a small waist. He, he didn't did, have yeah. a bloated stomach. You know, they look like we'd looked probably a week or two after a show. Because if, any, if anyone's ever dieted down, you get, you know, super dehydrated. You get super lean. You've got a small waist. But then after a show, you start eating a week later. You're still in great shape. You're still vascular, but your stomach's sticking way the fuck out. He's still got abs. And pretty much whether they're just carbon up too much now and insulin and stuff like that. But... The judges should have pulled in a long time ago, and now they've started this classic division, which to me, that's what bodybuilding used to be, but now they've had to start a new division to try to pull it back to what it was. And to me, if they don't rein in the open bodybuilding, I think classic and physique's going to take over in a couple of years' time. Wow. So, so you, men's physique's going to take over open bodybuilding? I think so. If they keep, you know, the way they're doing it. You're always, always going to have the fans that love the freaks no matter what, but, you know... At the end of the day, it comes down to a money-making business. They chopped the women's bodybuilding because it wasn't making the money. Yeah. And to me, it's going to soon be like the open class. It's going to be more like a guest posing type thing. And sure, you might have a few smaller shows that will put on the opens. But when it comes to Olympia and that, people are going to relate more to the classic and the, and the physique types, I think. And <laughs> that's where the money stop. comes in. Oh, no. AJ looks really sad, depressed sad, now. Sad, he looks sad, depressed. No. That's going to be horrible. <laughs> Can you imagine going to the Olympia? All you see is board shorts. Board shorts. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll just hang myself now, I think. Uh, but who was the yeah, first... Be like, be like board shorts, board shorts and bikini. It'd be like mm. the muscle version of Hawaiian tropics. <laughs> <laughs> so being um, a, a 212 guy that was competing back in the day when the 212 wasn't around, or 202 and being an open, what do you think of the 212 class now and how it's doing and where it's going? I've always liked the 212. I think, you know, when it comes to conditioning, a lot of those guys come in conditioned and, you yeah. know, got the small waist in it. You might have one or two that could be a little bit blocky and try and eat up too much and carve up too much. But since the 202 and the 212 has been around, I sometimes think that that's more exciting than the open classes. But like I said, they really come in shape and, you know, conditioning's on with a lot of them. And, you know, when, when you're on stage, it's such an illusion. Some of those 212 guys can look like they're 230 pounds, 240 pounds on stage. So... I think it's sometimes more exciting than the open class. Yeah, Flex Lewis was messaging me yesterday when we were filming yesterday's episode, and I was saying that we had you on today, and um, he was saying that you were you'd been doing some filming. I think it was in FIBO or something, and he was saying I couldn't use any of the footage. Yeah. He said, Giles, I couldn't use any of the footage. He said because it was too like. Oh, he yeah. said it was hilarious. He said I'd love to be able to use it, but I can't use it. He said it's such a shame because Lee was always it's always been my hero. You know, especially coming into the industry. He could he could have used it. I posted some of it, but you Did know you? he'd probably get the phone call. He'd probably get the <laughs> phone call from someone because I just had I just had Generation Iron down here filming my documentary, and yeah. they were telling me once when Generation Iron put up a story, mentioned my name, they got the call from the top IFBB guys saying never mention me, never mention that. And I was talking to Jose Raymond when he came to Australia, and he did an article. It could have been in Flex or something where 
mm-hmm. he said, you know, I've always looked up to Lee Priest. I'd love to compete against him. And, you know, he's a hero of mine. Jose Raymond got a phone call. Don't you ever fucking mention Lee Priest's name in an article or so. Oh, really? I think after all really? these years of being... Yeah, after all these years, I think Shit. the off being needs to fucking get over themselves because it's like, wow, you suspended me, you suspended me for life, but yet... You still fucking carry on like a fucking pack of women. It's fucking you, ridiculous. Are you sus- meant to be a fucking yeah. Are you suspended for life? Are you yeah. suspended for life? For life, yes. Oh, still, I find still. That in the co- when did still, you find yeah, that out? Find that co- who, who told you this? I actually, uh, I actually found that out when I was would have been 06 when I got suspended for two years. Oh eight, I got my pro card back. Okay. And then in 010, I just figured I was going to retire and not compete anymore, so I just never renewed my pro card. But I was meant to go to, I think it was Sweden or somewhere like that, to just do an appearance in a seminar at an IFBB show. Promoter had the posters done up, the tickets done up, and two weeks before the show, he called me up saying, Lee, I can't bring you. The IFBB's just notified me if I bring you, I lose my IFBB sanction, Shit. and they'll suspend all the athletes. And, oh, by the way, they told me you're suspended for life. So I actually found out from a promoter who I was meant to go compete with i mean oh, going really? to an exhibition with now, so but haven't you yeah. seen but you've met jim Mannion and uh, those people around have you talked to them and, uh, and try to resolve this or because you're one of the f- no, no they don't they don't they don't talk to me and then it was like even when i was suspended for life i wasn't even allowed to attend the show they wouldn't even let me like even black skull if black skull sponsored one of the shows in america yeah they wouldn't even let me attend an expo which i find funny because an expo is open to the public yeah. But yet they wouldn't even let me into the expo. I'm like, you know, just fucking childish bullshit like yeah. that. It's like, if I pay my money to go into an expo, I remember one of the companies, when they put up a banner of me, they were told they weren't allowed to have a banner of me up at an IFBB show. So it's just, you know, just petty bullshit. It's like, whatever, you're a fucking bodybuilding organization. You're not fucking yeah. running the country, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Lee, Lee, last year you were at the Arnold. That was the first time you've been to America, I think, what, for probably about, well, about 10 years, maybe, was it? Because 2006, yeah, since, 2007, yeah, you moved since, back to Australia, since, didn't you? Since 2010, 2010 was the last time I was over there, yeah, but hmm. I think Black Skull had to do some wheeling and dealing to get me, to get permission to go back to the expo. Because I remember yeah. Dave Palumbo probably a year ago wanted me on his show, uh-huh. but yet when we did the interview similar to this, once the interview was done, he had to send the tape to Jim Mannion and um, Steve Weinberger to listen to the interview first before he'd be allowed to air it. So. Oh, really? Well, the one we did went up and it got great response. And you abused me in that yeah. one as well. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you, know, you, you need abuse. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, was, it was a really good interview. In fact, actually, the picture of me and my friend Crystal on the trade stand, she sent me the picture afterwards and she said, Giles, have you seen what's going on in the background? Because me and her had the picture and Lee's actually in the background giving me the finger. Yeah, so, uh... but we have to try. <laughs> but seriously, what? Giles, this is not good, Lee. You, you have to. You are one of the most respected bodybuilders of all time. Yeah. And you paid your dues on stage for so many years. People, I, I live in Norway, and and in Norway, in my gym, people have pictures of you still. You know, so it's like you should be able to make more money on your likeness in the IFBB Pro still yeah. to this day and in the future. Yeah, when I when I got when I got suspended for life, that's like I said, I had a, I had a contract with MD at the time. And once I got suspended. MD was told to dump me, which they did. Other companies dumped me, which they did. I wasn't allowed to attend. Even in Australia, the IFBB shows in Australia where I had friends that competing even in the amateur, I wasn't even, I'm not allowed into an IFBB amateur show to go support really? my friends. That's how much they... But why, yeah, but why, like why? Like this, this, whole, this whole thing about the suspension, to me, they got pissed because I'd argued a point because, you know, right. you know, I was with the IFBB, I did the PDI, and to me... There was no IFBB shows on when I did the PDI, but they say, Lee, you broke the number one rule. But yet, when I'm with the IFBB, I pay you for my pro card. Yeah. I'm an independent contractor. The mm. IFBB does not have me under contract paying me 100000 a year solely to stay with them. When I raced in NHRA racing, I could pay my membership in IHRA and go on race because the IFBB had their shows on. I qualify for Olympia. Come September, I think it was, or just before September, the PDI had their shows. I competed in them. And then a month later, it's the Olympia. But yet, it's like I said, if I do the PDI show, my fans go and watch it. They pay tickets, they go watch it. Mm-hmm. If I do an IFBB show a month later, my fans go watch it. So everyone's still making money, but yet they say, you broke the number one rule. So I said, okay, you have IFBB athletes that are convicted felons. You have IFBB athletes that are doing gay shit on video and stuff like that. So if a 
young son says to his mother, I like this guy, let's look him up. And he, they no. see this IFBB. <laughs> they say this IFBB. <laughs> Check him out. But, you know, if, if a young kid <laughs> says to his mum, look at this guy, I like him, let's Google him. And then they see the IFBB guy doing all this gay shit, or they see these other ones a convicted felon. So the young kid says, let's look up Lee Priest. What's he doing? He's competing, doing what he does for a living, making fucking money. But yet I'm the bad guy because I just wanted to go somewhere else and just make extra money. Mm. So it's all bullshit. It's like I said, it's just we're independent contractors yet. They say we can't compete anywhere else. So it's just crazy. Yeah, but it's, that's... But what, but, what, but what used to piss me off the most was the athletes all complain about it. Every interview I did in MD talking about the politics in the sport, they would come up there and say, yeah, Lee, we agree with what you're saying. And I'm like, well, if you agree with what I'm saying, why don't you stand with me? They're like, oh, no, no, we'll get in trouble. I said, no, if it's just me, they suspend me. Because I always say, like, you have the Mr. Olympia. Two days before, you have the athletes meeting. You know, say everyone's come to Vegas, the hotels are sold out, they've got the expo there. People come from all over the world, the sponsors have paid for it. You know, the athletes at the meeting two days before say, listen, if we don't get this, this and this, we're not walking out on stage on Saturday. They're not going to cancel the fucking show. The athletes have all the power, whether it be professional or mm. amateur. Without the athletes, they don't have fucking shows. So, mm. yeah, but the athletes just don't stand together. They just fucking bend over and take it because they all want a trophy. They all want to be the fucking number one. They lose their fucking balls and just take all this bullshit. They complain about it backstage and won't fucking stand up to them. It's like I said, it's just bullshit. Uh, well, uh, Bob Chicarello said that he tried to change it and then he said that you guys didn't show up that you were one of the guys that did not show up to help him when he tried to do this back in the day is bob, this true bob said bob says a lot of things but you know bob's full of shit bob said also that lee didn't compete any through it back in the face of the ifbb now in 010 when my grandfather passed away that's why i stopped competing it had nothing to do with the ifbb when i went to the pdi it was because i've been competing with the ifbb for 15 years same judges same competitors I wanted something new. I need to relight my fire. So, yeah. you know, Bob says he went to bat for me here and there. The only, Bob's a bit like Sean Ray. He's out for Bob like Sean's out for Sean. They're out to keep their name out there and make a dollar in the sport. When it comes down to the athletes in general, no, because you talk to all the athletes who Bob thinks they like him. Behind Bob's back, most of the majority of them fucking hate him, so... Over to you. Uh, all, <laughs> that, all the thing I just think that there's so much thing that's went on and we just want... IPB Pro League is the only league that people are watching. And you are the only, one of the biggest stars of all time. So we just want, wish you guys just yeah. ma made up, Lee, because I understand you might be frustrated and whatever there when is. I, when I, when I said, when I'm, not, I'm not even frustrated because when I got suspended, I just laughed. When I got suspended for life, I just went cool because to me, you know... And you know, again, the Mr. Universe title, that goes down in history. I said yeah. somebody can have eight Mr. Olympia titles, but how many get suspended for life? To me, that's just another achievement, so it doesn't bother <laughs> me. It hasn't. I've still been able to, even though I've been suspended, what, since for life for the last almost 10 years, mm. I'm still making a living out of bodybuilding. I'm still doing my thing. I haven't gone away, so mm -hmm. I'm sure that probably pisses them off. They probably thought suspending me for life, you'd never hear of Lee Priest again, but mm. hey, I'm still around. People yeah, are still talking about right. me. And, and the thing is, too, when I've done interviews, I've never attacked Jim Mannion. You know, if it wasn't for Jim Mannion, I wouldn't have got my pro card. I respect Jim Mannion. Nice Same as Steve Weinberger, all of them. When I did my interviews, I talked about the politics in the sport and the way the athletes were treated. And people used to say, Lee, shut your mouth. You've got good money coming in. You do well at contests, which I did, but it's not about that. It's about the guys who bust their ass just like me, who train just as hard, just like me, who weren't making a dollar, I was standing up for those guys, and the guys at the top should stand up for those guys, but they didn't. They're like, mm. well, I'm Mr. Olympia, I'm happy, I'm making good money, fuck those guys. But no, we all should stand up for each other, but they didn't, so that's what used to piss me off. Mm. What, what was the feedback when you were at the Arnold Classic last year? Because I know we did the interview, and I could see the cues for you. you were, mm -hmm. There was a great reception, you know, you're on the Black Skull booth. I mean, it was. what was that like? Did you get any pros coming up to you, talking, saying, you know, oh, Lee, it's great to see yeah, you again, we'd love I you to get, come back? I get on. I pretty much get on good with all the pros. Well, you know, once yeah. from my year, I get on good with them. And some of the newer ones, the 212 guys, I get on great with. Like, you know, when I was over there in FIBA with Flex at the gym in the morning, we're mucking around, having fun. So the majority <laughs> of them, yeah. I get on great with. So it was, you know, I don't have a problem. I know some of the IPB officials were at the Black Skull booth, and I looked over to see if they make eye contact with him, but they didn't. So I was like, yeah, if they want to talk to me, I'm standing right here. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's that bad, huh? We didn't yeah, know. So I'm just saying, yeah, I didn't realize it was quite, you know, that. 
you know, I thought because I, I got I, when I saw Ali at the the Arnold last year, I was like, yes, this is great. You know, because Bob Chicks in t- you know in, in tidying with Black Skull, and I thought, well, they've got to at least going to be having some dialogue. I thought this is going to be good, and I kind of hoped that it would see more. But it's great. I mean, you're at the Arnold Australia and everything, and I thought, oh, this is maybe this is um, a way of kind of bringing him back into the fold, and you know, and uh, and and starting anew. <laughs> Giles is shocked. <laughs> that, well, yeah, I'm <laughs> speechless here, mate. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, I've never seen Giles be so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> He stopped. No, but is no, Giles, no, Giles, Giles, Giles is suddenly just realised he's like, fuck, I thought Lee was back in the good books. Like, no, 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 no. The I, the I, the IFBB is going to pull my fucking press pass oh. if I can put this one up. No. Uh. <laughs> but does, but has Dave Palombo getting any um, calls from the IFBB because you're on? Is there anything when no, you got? Be, no, because when I'm on, I don't. I said I don't talk about. It. I, there's nothing open. You don't have it talked about we just talk about stuff in general but no the first time i went on he had to get like i said they had to approve the show and listen to what i said first to get to go ahead to go on and since then it's been okay but like i said i've got nothing to rubbish about the alpha because i haven't been competing with them now for over 10 years so mm. i don't know what politics goes on still i've spoken to a few people who used to be high up and aren't in the alpha anymore and it sounds like the same stuff goes on but like i said if the athletes don't stand together, I'm sick of fucking talking about it and going on about it because, like I said, after shows, they want to bitch and complain, but mm. they have the power to change stuff if they wanted to, but they don't. Yeah. Lee, let's talk about the last year. You got married, so congratulations. Yes. I was happy to see that. Yeah. So, yeah, how's that gone? How's it, you know, how's life generally? Great, great, great. Never been happier. Sort of Good. get on great. I was over there, I think I was over there at Body Power last year too with Aaron and then... I was over there towards the end of the year after we got married. We came over there and just done some stuff with Aaron and mm-hmm. had sort of a honeymoon over there. And I should be coming back. I think it's I think May. I think um, Body Power's on again this year in May. Yeah, so yeah. around May 12th, I should be coming back over there with Aaron and his mental hamster Office, yeah. company. So Fantastic. Yeah, so yes. you can come back to the UK again. You can do another UK. I'll be back in the UK. Do you, do you want me to drive you around again in my Jag? No, have you still got that Jag? No, 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 that thing died a death. I think that died. Th- that thing died shortly afterwards. Actually, I had to get rid of it. It was it was knackered because we were driving. I, I think when, uh, yeah, the bloody suspension was split and all that. Yeah, because um, yeah, poor old Lee. Si- I remember sitting in the back, squashed in the back with the suitcase, yeah. and just eating chocolates <laughs> along the way. So. Yeah, yeah, half. The and then I remember going. UK. I remember going to Giles's place and talking about a bachelor pad. The cunt never dusts. The cunt never sweeps. He never does anything. So, me being me being OCD took me like three hours to clean up his place as a fucking. Yeah. And I, I also mess. got him. I introduced him to Nando's and he ate the steak, mm. not the chicken. No, oh, after, no. I, yeah. So anyway, that was that was a good that was a good week actually. Yeah, because um, yeah, I didn't realize you were bringing your friend Mark with him. He's actually uh, adding me on Facebook, Mark. He's uh, we, we we had a little chat about you a few few months ago and everything it was great. Now that you interviewed a lot of uh, current guys on over on the other station, who's your favorite guy to interview? Who's the favorite guy you like to talk to of the current scene? And who's your least favorite guy? Uh, I don't really talk to many, but if I bump into anyone at Expo, I always like talking to Chris Cormier if I bump into him at Expo, or I always like t- talking to Kai as long as he doesn't start talking about the theory of relativity in the fucking universes and the stars <laughs> and the sky, fucking just like... Get to the point, Kai, yeah, you know? Yes, like, yes. You know yeah. I asked you what you have for dinner. I didn't ask you about the fucking solar eclipse <laughs> and the gravitational pull of the Earth, for fuck's yeah, sake. Yeah, so. yeah. That's true. <laughs> but, is, but is that an act, though? Is that an act, Lee Priest? Is that an act from Kai? Does he really speak like this in private, too? Uh, backstage, I've heard him talk a bit different. So, you know, I think, I think you know, he's more philosophical when he's talking to the fans. And okay. backstage, he's like, hey, what's up? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because those okay. stories... Yeah, but like, no... What about the modern yeah, guys, the I'm modern the pros? Uh, I don't Speak really talk much. to any. It's just because of course I don't compete with them. It's like I don't. But even when I was competing, like I used to speak to Paul Delet because he lived with me for eight months. But That's right. all the other guys, the only time I generally see him would be at a contest. So you just say hi, you be polite and stuff like that. But mm. I never really hung out with pros or did stuff like that. I just kept to myself type thing. And like I said, I saw Flex Lewis over there at Fever, so we sort of had, mucked around, had a chat, stuff like that. But I never been one to hang out with bodybuilders, even yeah since I was young because the majority of them are just fucking, when they talk about meatheads, a lot of them are meatheads and mm. the younger generation, now what I want to talk about is fucking drugs and bullshit like this and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Mm. It's like, they don't want to hear about the fucking hard work, the dedication, yeah. the years and years of busting your ass. What they want to talk about is, what drug should I take with this drug? And if I take this drug and that drug, it's like, oh, shut the fuck up. Do you remember, like, we, you know? 
when we did the UK, that UK tour 2006 and we talked about, I don't think we even talked about the drug side because it just wasn't, it just wasn't of interest to you and you just, you're not, well, you were more, well, you, was, like I, said, I, I lived with Paul Dillett for eight months, well Paul lived with me when he separated from his wife, we were yeah. getting ready for the 98 Olympia together. Like I said, I saw Paul take a bit of growth because it was in the fridge next to my chocolate cake and stuff like that. And then <laughs> I'd see him, I'd see him load up a Winstrol syringe and sit on the table for a couple of days. He'd take it whenever. But the whole eight months Paul lived there, I never asked Paul what drugs do you use, what cycle do you take, because yeah. you know what I take, what he takes, what anybody takes doesn't matter. That's why I don't get why these young kids say, "Oh, I want to know what this guy's taken," or yeah. "I know what Dorian takes." Look, if Dorian told you exactly what he's taken, and I tell you exactly what I'm taking, and yeah. Paul yeah. told you, I said. I said, but even if I did, I said, even if you don't believe it or not, how does that help you? Because mm. everyone's body responds different. So ha knowing my cycle, Thank how's you. it going to help you? Thank if you. anything, it's like just fucking train and shit. If you're going to, to me, it's like I tell people, if you want to be a bodybuilder, if you've got the genetics and you just start off training hard and eating right and resting, if you've got the genetics for it, your body will grow before you even touch a fucking drug. Yeah. You won't need a drug. Your body will just respond to that. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you do finally get the end of your potential naturally, when you take a drug, it will respond a bit more. But young kids now, they're taking drugs before they even get a gym membership. So yeah. I was like, there's no foundation work. And I've mentioned it so many times. Yeah. Like I said, on the weekends or during the week, I've got mates that go play golf. They love it. They have fun. You know, but they're not coming up to me saying, Lee, next week I'm going to take on fucking Tiger Woods or this or that. I've got friends that play tennis. They're not saying they're going to take on Andy Murray on the doll in a year's time. They're going to be pro. They do it for fun. Yeah. But every dickhead that goes into the fucking gym thinks they're going to be Mr. Olympia and a pro bodybuilder if they take drugs. I don't know why. It's like they just don't have a – they're out of touch with reality. Yeah. And I see so many guys. Like I said, if you want to go to the gym and train and have fun, better yourself, that's great. But then you see these guys. I'm sure you've seen them. Five years, ten years down the track, they're still pumping all the drugs into themselves. Some people quit their jobs. Some people's relationships <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah, we do. We were talking about this in the car. We were actually talking about this in the car. I'm talking about Giles, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they just keep going and going and going. And like I said, yeah. like, you know, here's reality and here's their fucking thing. Like, reality needs to whack them up the face. But yeah. I've seen so many people's lives just 10, 15 years later taking more and more drugs. Like I said, and their relationships break up, they lose jobs, but yet mm. in this dream it is they want to be a pro bodybuilder or Mr. Olympia. And I said, you know, it ain't going to happen. If you just want to go to the gym and train, mm. that's great, but you've got to come to realise at some point it's never going to happen. Because you'll have guys, like I said, they might be good, you know, at those little local shows, but then the next guys up might be good at the bigger state shows or the national shows, and, you know, then you get the guys that will get a pro card, but mm. just because you've got a pro card doesn't mean you're going to be a great pro. That's a whole different level altogether again. So you, know, you just got to find out what you're good at and just, you know, accept what you can do. You know, go for it if you can. But, you know, if you can't do it year after year and you've got to keep pumping drugs in and nothing's changed and you're going backwards, well, you know, it's just you've got to face reality sometimes. I, I remember you telling me, I think you said in something like 20 so many years, you'd never, you'd train five days a week and you, I think you'd had one period where you'd missed a couple of weeks for some good reason. Mm -hmm. But you said, I never, ever, ever miss training. And that was... I mean, when you did that UK tour, you were still training. We were finding gyms for you to train at, and you just competed. You'd think, yeah. oh, I just want to eat chocolate and take a few weeks off. But you were, no, I've got to train. I've got to train. You know, mm -hmm. training and food is always more important. You know, when I come over there to do the universe in 2013, I think the universe was on a Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. Say it was the Sunday, I trained the Saturday. Won the universe Sunday, 5 a.m. Monday, I was back in the gym again. Yeah. As I said, I just love training. I never got into the sport for the money and actually i never got into the sport to even be a bodybuilder i got into the sport because i wanted to look like the he-man cartoon and Superman. someone said oh maybe you should go and maybe you should go and train then when i went to america to do the amateur show yeah i w never even thought about being pro until i got my pro card it's just something that happened so was that the niagara, anything niagara. In, i find yeah yeah niagara yeah i think anything in life if you love something a lot and you love to do it and you have a passion for it you don't see it as a job it's just something you enjoy doing and loving you'll excel at it if you i yeah. uh, don't like doing this i hate it. that's like a lot of guys today it's like mm -hmm. you see them go online now instagram or facebook and all they do is bitch about their training bitch about the diet it's like no one's forcing you to fucking do it if it's that hard don't fucking do it you know yeah. it's like we don't want to hear you whinge and complain about it you know go get another job then yeah, going back to when you know the drug side is like you. Um, were you when you were seventeen years old? You were competing in, as an in, in the mm -hmm. world championships as a lightweight, not even as a junior. You were competing with your yeah. mum, weren't you? 
Yeah, my, my mother and I competed together. We were the first mother and son in the world to win a com- contest together. Yeah. And when I was 17 is when I won my first national title, but they said I was too young to turn professional. So <laughs> I won again when I was 18, still said I was too young. Won again when I was 19, <laughs> still said I was, <laughs> I was too young. Always and politics I, still, I, was still a, I was still a lightweight then, so after yeah. the third time, I was like, fuck this, I was still a lightweight. So after being 19, I'm like, well, screw this, I... Did my first eight week cycle at Decker and put on twenty pounds in eight weeks, and that was it. I remember because it was the you got ninth place at the nineteen ninety um, uh, Niagara Falls show, and that was when mm-hmm. they uh, that's when they said this guy you're only twenty years old, and that's when they said this guy needs a pro card. Mm. And you, you was the first pro yeah. show was in nine, well, 1990, nineteen ninety, wasn't it? Yeah, as was ninety, I think it was ninety two, ninety three. My first one was. Mm-hmm. And then 94, I think I got fourth or third at the Ironman the following year and stuff like that. And just when, well, when I came to America, I was originally down the coming to the Niagara Falls Amateur Show. Yeah. And then when I got my pro card, like I packed my suitcase, I was going for two weeks. And then when I was at Gold's Gym and Jim Mannion saw me, they petitioned the pro card. I got that. And then Ed Connors from Gold's Gym took some photos of me, sent them to Joe Weeder. The next day, Joe Weeder said, come up for a, like a meeting. And then... The rest was history. My two weeks turned into 18 years of being in America. Well, you moved, no, you moved back to Australia in 2007, wasn't it? 2008. Oh, sorry, because I remember when we spoke at 2006 and you were talking about, I'm going to maybe go back to Australia and see my family because I've not seen them for a while. And, and then I remember seeing like I a think that, I think that I think that, I think that was the last time we spoke until I saw you at the Nine of No, I, I, I remember a few emails. Uh, we, my good friend, my good friend Giles. Thank you. <laughs> we want some. We want some real fan questions. On, Who's man. got the best arms of all time, Lee Priest or Roller Winkler? Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Lee Priest. That's uh, been voted on many times. You know, Rulies. Yeah. Rulies are bigger than that. But when you come down, like I said, MD. Oh, look, you've had that MD article, don't you? You still work for him. So, MD did the big poll. I think it was me first. Phil Heath was second, and mm. then. Winkler could have been third or something like that, but when they're going That's for overall bicep, tricep, forearm conditioning and stuff like that, I think I won. But you know, everyone's going to have their favourite no matter what. But you know, it doesn't mean shit to me anyway. But you know, yeah, yeah. It is. if everybody peaked, who would be the best two twelve of all time? You, Sean Ray, or Flex Lewis? That's a good one. Well, Sean, well, Sean would say him, and, and I would say me. But that, like I said, a big, great contest. I, I don't ever put myself on a pedestal, so. I reckon, you know, Sean is best, me at my best, and Flex at his best, and be a great contest. So I'd just come down to who the judges wanted that day. Mm. It's hard to pick because, like I said, we've all got different body types. So, you know, Sean's, you know, a little fag, and um, Flex and I look like freaky bodybuilders. So, you know. <laughs> 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 uh, I, do, I have my next hey, question ready. Right he always I throws think, me. He throws you? me. Oh, like, no. Me, like, mine's gone blank now. Yeah. Now that now that I think about it, Sean will probably win because you know he's probably better at sucking cock, so he'll win. <laughs> What's the worst Mr. Olympia decision you ever seen in real life? That's a good one. In real life. Real life. Uh, yeah. uh, well, real I, life or fake life? <laughs> I mean, at the that you <laughs> saw, I, yeah, that you were competing at. Oh, What's the true. worst thing you ever seen? Yeah. I was disappointed. I think my very first Olympia in 97, like, you know, Dorian looked great in that, but I thought NASA, mm. NASA might have had in that year. I think NASA could have easily beaten Dorian. Because I said Dorian was at the end of his reign then. He had a few injuries and stuff like that. His stomach had got a bit more bloated. And I think NASA just came in looking the best that day. So, you know, it would have been easy, easy win for me to see NASA win that. And then, I don't know, you've got those other ones where, you know, you've had the Jay and the Ronnie battles where it could have gone either way type yeah. things. So, it's really hard to tell because when you're on stage competing, you get a whole different look at it compared to somebody from the audience or, mm. you know, somebody sitting at home watching it. So, you know, I always, I always knew I'm never going to win it, so it didn't bother me. I just wanted the show to be yeah. over so I could go and fucking eat. I didn't, <laughs> care, about the, okay. I didn't care about the placings. It's like every yeah. time I did an Olympia, I was always like, look, I aim for the top 10 because back then, if you got the top 10, that qualified you for next year. So mm. that took a bit of stress off having to qualify. So if I aim for 10 for now, I got 7 for 8. That's just a bonus to me. So mm. I never even yeah. worried about the placings, really. Every contest I did was mainly, well, they were because, you know, if you get a supplement contract, you've got to do at least two or three shows a year. Mm. So I was pretty much had to do it for that. But the only good thing about doing the shows was just the fans get to see you and the expos. But... If I never competed, it would never have bothered me. You know, my, my main fun was going to the expos and meeting the fans and just hanging out there. Even when I was competing, I'd go to the expo and hang out all day where you get these other pros. Oh, they can only go for an hour, an hour or 
too. It's like, you've done nothing all fucking year, you lazy cunt. Just go to the expo and meet the fans. But yeah. they just bitch and complain like they're prima donnas. It's like, oh, bloody hell. It's like, what, if you stand up too long, you're going to lose some muscle. Or backstage, I'd joke around and someone would get pissed off because I'd be joking around and laughing. It's like, oh, <laughs> yo, you can't you can't laugh. You might fucking smooth out backstage. It's so fucking <laughs> serious. It's like, yeah, it's just... Yeah, too many fucking, I think, too many egos and prima donnas get, get going on a bit there. You know, they're, they're, I think they read all the bullshit online about themselves and they start to believe it, whereas me, it's like, Giles can tell you, I'm Lee Priest. I'm, I don't see myself as a pro bodybuilder. It's like, wow, I'm no different to you. You go to the gym and train, I go to the gym and train. I, I was lucky enough to get a pro card. Whoopie fucking dude, doesn't make me any there's better a, than anybody there's else. There's a so. big difference, Lee. You got the best yeah. arms of all time. You're a Hall of Fame. Yeah, that Don't you talking down on yourself? Yeah, but that doesn't that doesn't make me better than anybody else in the gym uh. just because I got better genetics and have bigger arms. But mm. me training in the gym is no different than you training in the gym. Just uh. because I was lucky enough to get a pro card, I'm just a guy that goes to the gym. I'm not Lee Priest, a pro bodybuilder. I'm just a guy named Lee that loves training, just like anybody else. But you know, half these other guys believe the hype. They believe the bullshit. And it's like I said. I've been training 35 years now. I've never asked anybody how many sets you got because I can go do something else. There's other machines I can use. But some of these guys are like, I'm getting ready for Olympia. I want that machine. It's like, well, why would you want that machine? I said, if I'm getting ready for Olympia, okay, that's important or any pro show. But if a woman wants to lose 20 pounds, that's just as important to her. I've got no more right to the machine than what she has. But, yeah. you know, you get these mm. wankers that go in there thinking they can run the place and carry on. But, yeah, I've never been that way. I've, That's why I just sometimes that's why I love training at World Gym and not Gold's. Gold's had a lot of egos yeah. over at World Gym. There was Lou Frigno, there was Arnold, there was no music. Joe Gold was there every day. So mm -hmm. it was that older type of crowd. There's none of that ego wow. bullshit over there. Mm. So given going back to the 90s, given the depth of talent that was in the 90s, who do you think was the most underrated that would say if you put them in the in the pro scene today, they would just you know do very very or much better? Okay. Um, Well, pretty much back then, if you put them in the pro scene today, I think they could all still win. I, I think Flex Weirder at his best in the pro scene today would win. Yeah. Kevin Leverone at his best in the pro scene today would win. Mm. NASA would win. Chris Cormier. So, like, any of those guys back then in the pro scene today, I think, would still wipe the floor. So, mm. it's like, you know, sometimes it's like his bodybuilding really moved ahead. I'm sure someone like Phil Heath, like, he looks great up there. But to me, I still think Flex Weirder at his best would take out Phil Heath. You know, something like that. Or... What? Like I said, Paul, Paul Delette at his best would still yeah. knock the majority of these guys down. So it's just, it's hard to say, you know, what it's, you know, to me it's like bodybuilding, yes, it has progressed a little bit, but then when I look back at some of the shows here, even in Australia, I see guys who have in their 40s, mid 40s, winning the overall Mr. Australia, beating younger guys in the IFBB. So it's like, are we moving forward or are we going backwards? So, yeah. You know, don't, like I said, I just don't know what it is because I don't even if you look back at the USA's or the Nationals in America, The mm. depth that used to come out of that, you'd oh, see those nice. guys coming out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, That's Cormier, like Flex to, Wheeler, Mike oh, Manarazzo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, all them yeah, guys, yeah. Cormier and Paul DeMayo. You don't see oh, people like that anymore wow. coming out of it. No. So, But they're coming just, from... To me, it's, mm. That's to me, it's very like, I don't know, a lot of people... Yeah, some guys train hard now. Still, I, I give them credit, they train hard, but I don't think it's like it used to be because before you train for a couple of hours and shit, now this whole new age shit come out that... Any more than 45 minutes, you're overtraining. And it's like people want to be the best in the world or something. They want to be big, but yet they don't want to put the hard work in. Mm. It's like you can't be the best boxer in the world or the best gymnast in the world or the best tennis player in the world and only train for 45 minutes a fucking day. You know, you've got to bust your ass day in, day out. And then people are like, oh, if I don't do, if I do too much, I'm going to burn up my muscle and all this sort of bullshit. It's like Arnold and those guys would train two or three times a day as yeah. long as you get the rest in and get the food in. But like I said, somebody was just getting lazier and lazier, and it's just crazy. You were you were always a big volume trainer. You were like proper old school, 20, mm -hmm. 25 sets for arms uh -huh. and biceps. And I mean, I watched you train, and it was like, shit, this guy is just training forever. But the, even though the, the talent is way worse coming from America, there's a lot more talent now coming from the Arab countries. Oh, Middle East. Yeah. And Middle oh, yeah. East, yeah. and I really think and that's what I said too. I've always thought too. You know, that's what the thing that just pissed me off back in the old days because you would see someone good come from like even the UK or mm. Germany or somewhere. And then I used to hate it when these people would say, "Well, they got to pay their dues. They got to pay their dues." It's like bullshit. Mm. It doesn't matter what country you come from. When you walk on stage, you can see who looks good, who's in shape, who isn't in shape, and the best man on the day on that stage should be the one who wins the show. Mm. There shouldn't be. This is his first show. He's got to earn his fucking brownie points to win it. It's like whoever comes out in shape on that day should win it. So Yeah. 
And do you know what, Lee? Considering um, you know, many said you were never ever going to compete again. I, st- I said this to you last year at the uh, the Arnold. I said the, the condition you brought the 2013 Universe, I think, was probably one of your best conditions. But it was also one of your lightest, wasn't it? Yeah, because when I was doing that, it's like I said, it's like a here we go. I'm, you shredded I'm from the IF, I've come from the IFBB to NABBA, and it's like, well, if I do NABBA now. Even if I go in looking my best and I got second or third, I could just see the internet the next day. Oh, fucking has been. He's a washed up. He's a fucking piece of shit. So, <laughs> no, shredded, shredded oh, glutes, hammerstrings, absolutely ripped to shreds. I didn't know. So I didn't know who I was going to be again. So I just figured, you know what? I'll just come in as hard as I can. And you know, because I knew on stage. Because I remember back when I did the 2002 um, San, San Francisco when I won that. Mm-hmm. I only weighed 199 pounds in that show, but people said. When people ask me, I said, what do you think I weighed? They're like, oh, 240, 230. I said, no, it was 199. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I knew with my with my body, the way the muscles are still round and full, yeah. I knew if, if I come in shredded, I'm going to look bigger on stage. So, I, And I knew some NABBA guys sometimes like to come in fuller and stuff. So I figured I'd just come in with conditioning and hope it all pans out, which it did, luckily. I mean, your hamstrings, your glutes, your like, lower back, everything was at that. I mean, we've never seen condition like that in mm. you. You're quite like that. Mm-hmm. In that, you know, plus you had the muscle maturity as well. So obviously, after the universe, what did and you won it, and you thought, okay, I've come back after seven years. What what was your decision then? Was it um, obviously the accident a couple of years later? But what, did you decide to compete again? Did you thought? Well, actually, the year the year after that, I was just helping promote NABBA in Australia, just doing guest appearances and stuff. And I was actually planning on doing maybe the worlds or something like that in mm. 2015. And then the car accident happened, and right. that was the end of that so yeah that's what i was planning on doing doing the naba worlds and just seeing where it went from there and i was talking about at the time with um when lee thompson started up that new organization and stuff like that and even paul delette i was talking about the doing his organization so <laughs> aj's a know, big fan I, of lee thompson I, I, lee thompson was such a clown bro tell, tell him your story <laughs> tell him your story tell him your story no no <laughs> well, I remember, the flight well i remember, well, I remember I remember Lee Thompson called me up once he finally split. Oh. This was after he this is after he aired all the dirt on the IFB oh. and stuff and he's this and that and blah blah blah. So he calls me up and sends me an email. He's like, Lee, I'm starting this new thing up. Would you like interested in competing and stuff? I said, Well, wait a minute, I said, um, all this stuff you're saying now, I said, that's the same stuff I said about the IFBB and I got suspended for that and I said, And you're one of the guys in my fucking hanging party and now you're saying the same shit and you want me to come and compete for you mm. after you're, you're, you're in that group that said, oh, Lee Priest is lying, he's making this shit up, none of it's true. That's actually true. <clears throat> and now you come out saying it's all true and you want me to come and support your organisation. No. So. No, I, don't, I don't think so. He's having a church bodybuilding federation now. A church bodybuilding a church. federation? In, in uh, South in America, yeah. I've got no, you, co- I've well, got no comment probably, for that. Well, that's probably okay, because every time I see an American win a bodybuilding show, they're always thanking God, so he's always there mm. helping them train and stuff. So, you know, but, he hasn't got time to help people dying in the world. He's helping bodybuilders win contests, God. So. <laughs> there you go. Oh, do you? Over to you. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it again. No, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But just don't, go up. Don't, but, touch, don't touch on religion or politics now. <laughs> no, no, no. We, we, we can. No, how's, yeah. how's, 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 Bre- how's Brexit going over there? You can touch anything you want, Lee. Oh, <laughs> I'm touching. I'm touching on myself right now. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> but just to be clear, you're Sean Ray's friend, though, aren't you? I get on right with Sean. I, yeah, I went for brunch with him a few weeks ago. Do you guys? Hey, hey, hey Arnold. Charles, so you... Charles is everyone's friend because he's an ass kisser. That's oh, what... <laughs> no, because you got to defend Sean Ray a little bit because you had you lunch watch, with you him. Watch, you watch. You watch when Giles has Sean Ray on this show next, he'll be fucking bagging me. Yeah, Sean, that's right. I didn't I didn't appreciate what Lee said about you. Okay, let's let's let's, let's do Lee let's do that then and you can watch it. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. There's nothing you want to say. No, it's Sean Ray. Nothing you want to say. What have I got to say about Sean? Well, maybe defend him or like something. What you want to do you do? ever would you would you ever leave Sean Ray with your girlfriend while you're not there, Giles? <clears throat> <laughs> okay, let's let's look at Giles and see. Next subject. Seriously, next subject. <laughs> okay, next subject. What, what when you back has to? He so- ever, has he ever? Has he ever text? Has he ever text your girlfriend Giles and sent her messages on Instagram? No, he has not. Uh huh. <laughs> Chris is laughing behind. No, him. he fucking has. Because <laughs> then I wouldn't be going for brunch with him if he did. Oh yeah, that's true. It's fair enough, isn't it? Yeah. Go on, after uh, you. Do you do you, do you watch the female side at all of the sport? 
the female side. No, Do you I watch? Used to, uh, I used to watch the fe- I used to watch the female bodybuilding a bit because you know when I was with Kathy and then she was competing, and then yeah. like I said, they pretty much got rid of it. But now, hmm. uh, well, I got the physique, which is still sort of a smaller version of bodybuilding. It is a bit, but as far as all the other classes go, like the bikini, and that where they stick their ass out and show you what they had for lunch up their vaginas and stuff like that. <laughs> no, I don't watch any of that. No. Don't watch any of that type of crap. To me, it's just like insulting. Yeah. It's like they stop the men doing the bent over pose to show their hamstrings. So I like, can't show your hamstring. That's offensive. But yet the girls turn around and show the fucking money maker right up their crotch and stuff. And then the fitness girls have to do that leg open pose in front of the judges. Yeah, that's nice. And that's a good nice, point. Isn't it? But that's, yet the that... men, the men weren't allowed to show their hamstrings because that's rude. But, that's you know, actually I've they, never they... uh, Lee. I've never heard that point made, and that's actually a really really good point. I've got to say that that is a good point. Oh, thank you, thank you. Bring yeah, it up yeah. next time you're with the IFBB. I will. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, obviously, I've been following you on Instagram. I've noticed. Well, my, the... ask, ask my ask my good friend what's his name that runs the UK BFF. He loves me. He tried to be in all my seminars when I was over there. Oh, I heard. Who's this? Who's this? What's okay. the one that runs the UK BFF? The UK BFF. Bill Tierney. Yeah, that's him, Bill Tierney. Yeah, my friend that tried to stop every seminar I did with Aaron. Yeah, it's like okay. telling gyms, if you have Lee at your gym, I'll suspend all your athletes and this and that. And uh, guys are fucking. Why would that's, you... that's actually probably something that sounds true. But why would I'll be honest, no, I'll be honest, that is true. That is true. That is true. We got it all on video because we yeah, were no, I believe the that. whole thing at the time. And when Bill Tierney, Aaron's got the video and voice of him. Yeah. Because we were doing my video going around England and I think when I he remember caught this. Aaron up saying, saying you can't put these shows on with Lee and when he caught up Jim saying you cannot have Lee at your gym or I'm going to suspend your IFBB athletes we got it all recorded stuff like that so yeah no I remember, I remember hearing about this head. I remember I don't know whether I spoke to Aaron directly mm-hmm. but I heard yeah I think Aaron told somebody that uh, yeah. that, that actually happened yeah now that sounds yeah. about right we got, it, we, got it, we got it all on tape because he's on speakerphone while he's trying to make all his friends but is yeah. he with the IFBB yeah. Pro League no, no 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 he's the UK FF that was there the Raphael side now the Raphael side so why would they try to do the same thing? What why what would the reason behind this? Why would this why would they do this? Well, ask Lee. What do you think the reasoning well, is for just, this? Well, I just didn't like me because because I wasn't in the IFBB anymore, and Aaron had set up probably twelve seminars. I think two gyms pulled out because I think one of the guys who pulled out was a IFBB judge, and he had a gym, and oh, Tyranny Sa- threatened him. Simon What's Fa- his name? Simon Zach Fan. Khan. Simon Zach Fan. Khan. Zach Khan was meant to do a seminar with us, and he caught up Aaron. Aaron's got it all on tape, Zach Khan on speakerphone saying, I can't do the seminar because Bill Tyranny just said, if I do the seminar, I won't place in the pro shows. He'll take my pro card off right, me okay. and all this bullshit. So, no, I think, I think one, of the, one of the gyms was Simon fans and they, they rang him up and they said, no, you can't because I think Simon yeah, was I tried to do with Simon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried to do with Simon yeah. fan too and Simon fan right. just told him to fuck off. So yeah, he did, he did. That's why I have, re- I have respect for Simon because they tried to say to Simon, well, yeah. if you have Lee at your gym, you can't do this or put on the body power thing anymore. So I was like, well, they can give a fuck. That cost me money. So yeah. I'm having Lee at my gym. No, I, I think so it's it was... just like I said, bullshit. It's like they tried to stop people from making a living and making money. It's just like I said, he thinks he's a fucking gangster. <laughs> Lee, it was, it was Simon that told me that. Actually, it was uh, told me all that. Yeah. 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 Anyway, let's talk about. I mean, um, you've been getting the tattoo removed. How's that going? <laughs> 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 Quick you're, segue. You're, By the way, you're pulling me into this. Giles, Giles is never going to be allowed into an IFBB show again. <laughs> I hate going to shows. No, no, I, do. I, don't, I love it. I actually do. I actually enjoy it. No, no you I love going. So I just had it done. It's still a little bit red and swollen. I just had it done on Sunday, so it's only two days ago. So how many treatments? Good look. How many? How many uh, treatments have you had? One. Oh four. It's, it's like burning the flesh, isn't Very it? Good. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so how many more is it going to take? Are you going to get rid of it all uh, or it's completely? Hard, it's hard to say because you know where the ink is. Sometimes you know if the tattoo has put the ink in deeper, it can depend on the type of ink. That's why some right. are pretty much all gone now, and some still there. And I like what the comments online. Oh, you fucking regret it. You're finally getting rid of it. Blah. It's like I've had it for 13 years. I'm just bored. Yeah. Like any other tattoo I have, if I get bored, I do a cover up or I just turn it into something else. It's like, yeah. well, I couldn't really turn this into anything unless I get making it bigger and bigger. I was thinking maybe half a Darth Vader type face, but <laughs> so I go I'm just I'm just removing it so I can upset the people because once it's removed, I'm putting something new on there. So. Oh no! <laughs> I was just about to say that as a joke. But. Were your sponsors freaking out first time they saw you with the face tattoo? No, not really, because I got only know six. I don't think they did. So no, I don't think. Oh. 
And even my mum didn't freak out. I just think those internet trolls freak out. It's like, oh, why well, you got a tattoo on your face? You think you're Mike Tyson, blah, blah, You short fucking steroid taking midget, man. <laughs> <laughs> never, never, never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So what do you think they about still say? They still say they still say to this day, "Why did you tattoo your face?" Well, I was like, "Well, hi, welcome to 2019, dickhead." It's like you know, mm. it's been there for yeah, 13, 13 years. So. 13 years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how about well, to me? It was like because when, when I got it, it's like to me, it's like I didn't have a job where I couldn't get one. Yeah. And then it's like getting the, getting a tattoo on my shoulder, my arm, my back, my leg. To me, the face is no different. I don't give a shit. It's like people are like, well, you just want to be looked at. Trust mm-hmm. me, people were staring at me doing the bodybuilding way before I got the tattoo on my face, so it didn't really make a difference. So. Mm. Plus, you're running but, out you of know. space because your whole body was covered, wasn't it? Your back, everything. Exactly. It's like, you know, anyone can put a tattoo on their shoulder. You've got to go for somewhere different. Yeah. The eyelid the eyelid was good. Ah, oh, that must have really hurt. Because isn't that so close tough. to your eyeball? <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but you don't want to blame yourself, mate. Actually, when I when I had this done, the How funny story that? behind this was I went with Aaron. Yeah. And Aaron, he had, you know, he'll hate me for saying it, but I tell everyone over time in the interview, when it um, comes to getting tattoos, he fucking hates it. He always <laughs> fucking starts. <laughs> so the tattoo, the tattoo guy said, Aaron, go have a break. You're stressing me out. So when he went out, he goes, Lee, what do you want? I said, oh, can you do something on my eyelid? He's like, sure, we can do that. So he did it, and I left the room, and I come back, and as he's talking to Aaron, he's like, oh, Lee's brave doing that. And Aaron's like, why is Lee brave doing yeah, that? He's like, because well. you can go blind doing your eyelid. And I'm like, what? I said, well, I didn't fucking know that. So I said, it's not a matter of being blind, being brave. I said, maybe if you had to said, Lee, if I do your eyelid, you can go blind. I mightn't have fucking done my eyelid. But of course you didn't. <laughs> <Fantastic>. <laughs> of, course you didn't of course you didn't tell me. It's like, hey, I, I didn't yeah, know any yeah. better. So but I didn't go blind anyway. So. Yeah. Oh, also, just before I forget, I want to, um, I love the pit, you know, the David Paul picture with the tyres. Do you remember back in mm-hmm. back in nineteen ninety? You, you, uh, your oh, daughter yeah. your daughter recreated the same picture with the same photographer. No, it was Ulrich, wasn't it? Ulrich, no. Ulrich. No, that, that was um Carl Carl Hensel in Australia, okay. the one with the yeah the same picture with the overalls on and the dumbbells. Yeah, his daughter recreated the same picture with the was it the same dumbbells or not the same tires? Yeah, same dumbbells, same overalls, same dumbbells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. What's this? Uh, just one question. Um, since I'm from Norway, uh, what's this Viking thing you just been signed with? I saw you got a new sponsor. Viking uh, wear. A, yeah, that's a um, Viking clothing company in Australia. Yeah, Viking liftwear. They're a clothing company down here in Australia. They signed me about a year ago, so it's just pretty good clothing and stuff. Yeah, it's really good. Mm. So it's nothing to do with Vikings or nothing. Since it's from Australia, then. Viking. Yeah, of course not. You know, oh. <laughs> what the fuck? I didn't know they had white like, in Australia. It's like it's like it's like koala bears. It's like it's like koala bear souvenirs being made in China. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what is this Viking shit? No. Uh, what's your favorite Lee Priest picture? You, is it that one where you show uh, your triceps in the gym? Tom Platts. Or is it one of oh, the God. super Superman if had, outfits? If I, a, if I had a dollar, if I had a dollar for every time I've seen that tricep one with Tom Platts. Oh, it's a beautiful picture. Great I don't, shot. I don't really have a, I don't really have a favorite. Some people like the David Paul picture with the they boxing were the best. bag and that was the best. Some things like that. I probably prefer. I probably prefer pictures that are more artistic rather than posing pictures. Mm, so, mm. but even that, even saying that, because they're me, I don't really like. Oh, I know. My wife always talks about putting pictures up in the house of me. I'm like, fucking no way. We're not putting up pictures of me in the house. Like, mm. I got some of me and her just nice pictures out and that. But yeah. as far as bodybuilding pictures go, I don't have any up of me. It's like I don't have any of my trophies up. I don't need any of that bullshit. You know, some of these bodybuilders you interview and they get to a room and <laughs> sit right in the middle of their trophies. Like, look at all my trophies and <laughs> behind me. I'm a bodybuilder. Yeah. Look at my achievements. It's like, oh, God, fuck off. It's do, like you dickheads. Do you remember those? those- like, I don't have any of that shit. Yeah, do you remember those David Paul photo shoots? Because for me, they were the iconic Lee Priest pictures. How, I mean, we, we spoke about, I spoke to David Paul personally about them. How long would those shoots take to get just those one or two images? Were they like quick shoots or were they like 10 hour per no, banal all shoots? All day, all day, all day. All day. Shoots. And then you'd always, ta- you'd always take it to places too where you're not meant to be. I remember the one with the boxing bag. We're yeah. down in an old warehouse downtown LA where it says, do not enter. Let's jump the fence, he says, and do whatever. And <laughs> wow. as we're, as, I actually got some really good pictures with the police, actually, because oh, nice. the police, this is when I owned a Black Dodge Viper, and the day before I was eating at the firehouse, and there was a few police at the firehouse, and I was chatting to them. So when we went downtown LA near the railroad yards, near these um, old building, we went in there illegally, and we're doing all the photos. The cops come wandering in, and they go, sure. oh, oh, are you Lee Priest? I said, yeah, they go, oh, we thought we saw you. Oh, lost you there. You heard you had a 
Zero. We took photos with them, but generally David Paul is one of those people where if I said do not enter, but it'll look like a great shot. Let's go do it. Let's go yeah, do it. And yeah. A couple of times we went out to the desert on those salt flats in the desert and took my Hummer out there and did a lot of photos out there. But nice. it was pretty good. Yeah. Always, like I said, bodybuilding pictures just get boring doing the front yeah. double bicep. You know, training shots like. So they're fucking boring. It's do, like how many times can you do a barbell curl or a fucking squat yeah. and shit like do you that? Mem- do you remember the f- shit over and over and over. Sorry. Do you remember the Flex Wheeler ones where they dragged a piano out into the desert, out into the yeah, Vegas yeah, desert? That, yeah. yeah, I love all that stuff, man. It's fantastic. You know, like I said, that's, to me, that's what, you know, it's more artistic and looks better than, like I said, mm. it, you can be a big freaky bodybuilder and do that and people can appreciate the art and the body form and that, whereas if Flex Wheeler did a bodybuilding pose, people would probably go, oh, yeah, that looks disgusting. But yet, mm. have Flex Wheeler just sort of flexing or just standing near a piano it becomes a whole different picture altogether that you know the general public can actually relate to and like it yeah okay That's the final question uh, final question i just think um you underestimate how popular you, your physique were for kids steven today because we've we a lot of people train because <laughs> we've been looking at you you know on youtube and you're one of the greatest of all time hey, hey, and hey, i don't. Don't blame me for your. Don't blame me for your stupidly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it's <laughs> a lot of people appreciate you, and uh-huh. I just wish that I, I'm a still. I wish people. I just wish you and I be pro can co- come like this, because you. Each time you're on interview, everybody loves it. Mm. Everybody loves your loves your personality. That's why RX has been uh, no, but <laughs> RX I has think, gone. I think I think I think RX should pay me to keep going on this bloody show. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I, do, I do. Because RX Muscle, uh, we don't talk about it on MD that much, but RX Muscle has gotten a real boost from you. Yeah, and definitely, you know, Sean Allen. I like Sean Allen too. You like Sean Allen, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Big Sean even, Allen. They don't even. They don't even pay me Eric they make me get up early in the morning I get up about 5 30 to do those interviews in the morning mm. and they don't even give me a dollar they should fucking pay me I reckon yeah I think they should pay you but <laughs> no but I just wish look you that, I was look at that look at that Giles it's the fucking comeback there Boom. oh my that's... god yeah Whoa. there's there's that oh. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard a crack there at a crunch yeah. awesome mate I've awesome, been awesome. That arm for a couple of years yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have to go lie down now. Now, awesome, mate. You look yeah. fantastic. How? Um, so you're like 46 now. 46. <laughs> What's that? You're like what? 46, 47 yeah, now. Turning, I'll be turning 47. Yes. Cool. That's still. Don't look a day over. Don't look a day over 45. Do I? Will you yeah. compete again? Will I compete well, again? Is, I've always said if if I got my neck fixed up. You know, yeah. if, if the neck operation went well, I get it fixed, and the bit of muscle atrophy I got here yeah. and everywhere else come back. And I, I, like I said, I'd go back to normal training, maybe get back on a little bit of gear and fill out again. Mm-hmm. And then if I died it down, and if, like I said, if, if I could get the condition of the universe, but maybe yeah. a bit fuller, then I would. But I, I wouldn't do it just for the sake of doing it because I'd hate for everyone to say, yes, Lee's making what? a comeback. Here comes Lee, and out comes Lee on stage. Everyone's like, yeah, yeah. Lee. Oh, fucking hell! What did he do? Yeah, but Lee, you could guess. I don't po- want to get that. I don't want to get that reaction. So what? What about guest posing at the Arnold Australia next year? Oh please! I, I, I'm just lucky. Look, they're just lucky enough to let me in the expo. <laughs> they sneak him through the back way. <laughs> sneak him in. Sneak him in under a hot Look, I've got I've got into the expo. Let's say next year, maybe yeah. I hand out a trophy, and then we work our way up. Come you know, back at like, seventy two. <laughs> we'll be. Great, yeah. there will uh, be yeah. a routine at sorry. Arnold. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, so what did you say, Ali? Like I said, I'll just yeah, about okay, I'll be 47 this year. Maybe let's aim for 50. Huh? Let's see if I can get a guest posing at 50. I fun. think he should do the guest posing at the Mr. Olympia in Las Vegas. The proper <laughs> that's the proper place to do it. Uh, I think one step With at a time. Of, lots, of, lots of strobe lights, smoke machines. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You just see this. Just see the silhouette. Hey Lee, dust off the old Superman outfit. Oh, it'd be great. Dust it off. Yeah. Uh, hey, I've got the I got the KP steel somewhere. Have you, do you remember the red boots you used to wear? It was at the uh, the London show. Oh uh, yeah. 2006. Yeah, the good. ones I couldn't, the ones that wouldn't zip up. That's right. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. Actually, I, actually I sold the red boots. Somebody actually brought them off me. I sold them on Instagram, and actually my posing trunks too. Those Superman posing trunks oh, cool. got sold, and mm. I sold a lot of my trophies off. People are like, why are you selling your trophies for? I'm like. Like, Lee must need money. I'm like, no, I don't need money. It's just that I came back from America in 08. When I was in America, they were in storage. Yeah. When I came back here, I 
paid God knows how much to get them shipped to Australia, put them straight in storage. So they're in storage here for almost from 08 to almost 2015. Yeah. It's like, and then I moved to another house. And I'm like, oh, why am I still bringing these shit around? So people would always ask, Lee, <laughs> yeah. got anything to sell? So I just put them online and sold them. And I ran to a guy the other week and he's got one of them and he showed me a photo and he's got a nice home gym and he's got one of my trophies in the gym. And nice. he says, you know, his mates come over, they train, they look at the trophy, gives them inspiration. So to me, yeah, yeah. I get more kick out of that rather than me keeping these trophies in a fucking box that I never look at. So yeah. I've had a few young kids purchase them and they have their trophy in their room or at in their gym at home. So, yeah. you know, if my trophies are giving people encouragement and enjoyment, you know, to keep training and stuff like that, that's where I'd rather my trophy be rather than, like I said, I keep it in a box moving it from place to place and it gets broken. So, I don't, I don't, so like I said, I, I've got the memories of it. I don't need mm. these little accolades. The only thing I've ever kept would be like I got that trophy behind me there. Mm -hmm. That's when I guest posed after the universe. If, if I've gone somewhere and someone gives me like something in appreciation or a gift, yeah. I keep them. But as far as things that I've won myself, it's like, nah, I don't need that bullshit stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't need to look at it and go, oh, wow, look at that. I won that. And when my mates come over, say, oh, come look at my trophy room. It's like, yeah. Plus, that kind of looks like uh, it looks like like an, like an ornament, a bit of sculpture rather than actual like a plastic or a metal well, trophy. It, it looks real, nice. That looks cool. That's a real, that's a real heavy one because yeah. it was from the... Fuck it, Sammy. You know when I come back from the universe? Yeah. When I come back from the universe, this yeah. thing here. Yeah. This thing here, it is. <laughs> what's it? Sparta. What's it say on it? It says, presented to Lee Priest, the overall number is the universe. As for the Mr. and Mrs. United Kingdom. That's a Paul Jeffries, isn't it? Paul Jeffries. Paul Jeff. Yeah. yeah, Paul Jeffries and yeah. Jason Matthews. Yeah. This trophy right. here, my universe. And my two universe trophies cost me eighteen hundred dollars to bring them back on the plane because Whoa! I was over the luggage. Because they're solid. Are they solid bronze or are they cast in bronze? That's fucking heavy. Whatever it is. So, <laughs> I said, so if anyone wants this trophy, they can buy it for eighteen hundred. <laughs> pay, just pay the shipping. Just pay the shipping. Exactly. Cool. Yeah, so, yeah, so, uh, but anything like that I keep, but my other competitive trophies, I just get rid of them. I've given away the Olympia mm. medals, the Arnold Classic medals. It's like, eh, mm, it's all yeah. bullshit. Who cares? Oh, and also, just one last thing. I enjoyed your little uh, your workout routine on that uh, on your Instagram yesterday. Did you like that the other day? I really liked it. I thought intense, it was really inspiring. <laughs> you thought that I almost kicked the bag down, didn't I? Yeah. Okay, I was his mate was, yeah, his mate was filming him when he was doing like the ropes and you know the, the yeah. okay. ropes and the, it was really up, funny. I give up. I give up. I give up trying to read the comments on that. I think it's up to like eighteen hundred comments or something. And that was good. I think impressions was like three hundred and something thousand people have looked yeah. at it. It's just my friends just like Lee. Just pretend you're going to do a little hit workout here. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, yeah. Oh, whatever. So no, it was really good. You know, yeah. you don't see fucking Phil Heath and stuff doing shit like that, do you? <laughs> 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 All right, AJ. Any final questions, mate? Well, we thank, let, let thanks for having you. Thanks for coming on. We really appreciate it. And you look great to be 47, 46, 47, and you look healthy. Forty-seven. And you're like, I think, yeah. still, I, think I, I think I've still got abs, even though I'm fat. I think I still got abs there somewhere. <laughs> No, so, so, no, so yeah. my, my pants. <laughs> and, we, <laughs> and we hope to see you on stage in the future. Yeah. Handing out trophies well, or guest posing. It was nice talking to you. I'll probably talk to you again, AJ. He'll get a phone call. He'll get in trouble from the IFB. Oh, he's there's going to be some problems himself. after this episode. It is what it is. It is what it is. We're not yeah. editing anything. We did oh. it with the last one because, um, yeah, there was a slight over, there was an overlap. But the last ep uh, interview we did, it wasn't edited. It wasn't edited. We edited one time when Giles dissed somebody's <laughs> kids without knowing it. No, no. <laughs> it was unintentional. No, no, we won't so go we, through that. We, we edited yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, I'd have been, I'd have been finished. I think, I, think, I, think, I think the last interview, didn't I mention Steve Blackman or something and you're worried about having to edit that? Yes. No, I think that was that was left in. That was left in. Mm. Yeah. I think you mentioned it maybe mm. five times. I think go out of five back, times we edited one. We edited one. He mentioned kept mentioning Steve about four or five times. And I think we had to edit out one or two of them because mm. it was, uh, yeah, it was funny. Though. Why is that? Steve loved it. Steve Why loved is that, it. I wonder? Steve loved it. That's the main thing. So he got lots of views. Steve and, loved it. Yeah, he did. He did, he did. <laughs> Steve, wouldn't have, Steve wouldn't have heard it. Steve would have been too busy talking to himself. <laughs> okay. All right, then, Lee. Well, I uh, really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boss. I really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. I do appreciate it. It's, uh, yeah. as, as ever, it's next always... Time, next, next, time you, next time you call me back and you're working for UK Beef and not MD anymore. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, that would suck. <laughs> Speak to you next week. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, all right, then, Lee. Well, I appreciate okay. you taking the time, mate. And uh, well, hopefully, I'll, I'll, I'll see you. Hopefully, I'll see you at um, Body Power. Body Power, if you're going. Yep. We might, I think mate, you're coming over. Yeah. Right, you? yeah, we'll come over and say hi, mate. Definitely. Mm. Well, you don't have to come say hi. I'll come say hi. You know, <laughs> my good friend. My <laughs> my good friend with my there. really good friend, Lee Priest, yeah. uh, as ever. I really appreciate you taking I'll the time. You, I'll bring you a Viking shirt from Australia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, yeah, this, is, this is where the Vikings started. We started here and we conquered the world. <laughs> 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 All right, yeah. then, mate. Well, uh, yeah, I'll see you at Body Power, mate. No, I don't want to see you. I'm going to talk to AJ. Okay, AJ, we'll okay. see you at Body Power, and I'll just uh, I'll just wait back at the hotel. Okay, the... you go, you go, you go, hang out with Sean. I'll go talk to AJ. All right, then, mate. We'll do that. We'll do that. All right, then, mate. Speak to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Bye. 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 Welcome back. <laughs> well, I think we've had a good run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Lee Priest. Chris, what do you think? Super nice guy. Super nice guy, he's cool, yeah. I mean, he's what, things with Australians, um, like they always say, if they give you shit, that means they like you. I'm not saying that he does like me, but um, we and Lee have got a bit of history and it's, um, yeah, I, I, I can take all that in good humor. And he is, he's, he's a good, he's kind of, he's got a very, very wicked sense of humor, which is kind of like what I like about him. Well, still, I will really wish the IBB Pro League and him could join, because he's such a big part of their history. Microphone. He's such a big part of their history. Yeah, yeah. He's such a popular guy still. I know, I know, I know. He's, the leg he's like the top 20s legends, you know, alive. Yeah. And like, uh, I understand it's fun going back and forth. People, with this interview, I probably people will be laughing, and, you know, at home. Yeah, young, yeah. Especially younger this, people. This will be our, probably our high highest viewed one. You watch. I, I know. but You know it will be. But I still wish that they can come together. Yeah. No, I do. I've been wanting that for years. I've you know, been so, that for years. Uh, but obviously we don't know the inside of what happened. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of history. The thing is, don't forget, Lee's bit started competing in 1990. He was one of the, like, the top pros for for like 16 years straight. Mm. He was, so he's, and he's a very outspoken. He's very, you know, he's he's very controversial. He kind of just does what he kind of feels like in, 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 with what he feels is right. And what, he, he kind of, you know, he's not... What? One thing, you think Sean Ray gonna slap him when he sees him now after seeing this? They've been going back and forth like that for years. It used to be on the forums, and I used to think, you know, like with um, Noel and Sean, the way they go at each other. I Noel. mean, they're accusing each other of all sorts, but they keep baiting each other. I think it's the same with Lee. Yeah, and Sean. but this is on TV. No, and no, he said they, Sean Ray is they've this been and... doing that for years, okay. mate. They've been honestly. Do you remember the forums? Do you remember the threads? Threads is one thing, TV is another thing. No, he's, no, he does plenty of interviews where he talks about those kind of things. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, he's, that's what you expect from Lee. I, I fully expected what I got from Lee. Sean Ray's not going to like this. Well, Sean, doesn't, they don't, there's no love lost, but I think, um, I don't know. I, I, I've, I've seen these people fall out, and then the next time you see them at a show and they're all talking to each other and laughing and joking. Mm. So I think maybe there is an element of theater in this. Dave Palombo ain't paying him. Mm -hmm. Well... You should you know. come over to MD. Well, we didn't pay Lee to come on. So, and he gave us like an hour and a quarter of his time there. Mm. So, you know, but um, it's nice to see that Lee is still so popular. And I mean, and I guess. Great. You see his arms still, age yeah. 40. Chris, it, you see his arms, 47. AJ. Not on any supplements or nothing. He, he, no, he comes off. He comes off. Yeah. Completely. And what, even, I mean, we did briefly speak about it in 2006, and it was laughable what he kind of. In mm. terms of, but people, and the thing is, this is why he gets people like him get shit, people like Dorian, because when they do actually say, people go, oh, it's rubbish, because the the access to information that we have on these kinds of subjects are from the, well, the people we were talking about in the car, who kind of say, yo, if you want to be a pro, you've got to take this much, and it's not, it's not, it doesn't, it, these, these people aren't an accurate source of information. Look at Lee Priest, he has done it. He... I think when we spoke 2006, when we did that UK tour, every day he was still wanting to train. He just competed. And he said, he said, Giles, he said, I've trained five days a, a week. For, I took a month off in the last, like, 20, was it, how, what, well, workout from 2006, from when he was 13 years old. He says, I've never missed a training session apart from this. And that's you know, why he has most, well, not mo a lot of muscle still. Oh, you know? he's, still, he's still, I mean, look at the photos on his Instagram. Check it out. He's yeah. still thick. Because he trains. Thick. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't rely on supplements to yeah. Yeah. keep it like that. Yeah. Very, very old school, hardcore, old school, uh, high volume trainer, hard trainer. You know, eats, he's, he's, he's regimented. He always eats well. Can we imagine he, like Flex Wheeler, come back and do the classic? What? Lee Priest wouldn't make classic. He's, oh, no. no. Okay. But I'd just love to see him. I would just love to see him guest pose. 
Yeah. I'd love to see him guest pose. Because he looked great in his return at that... Uh, oh, 2013? Yeah, he looked really good. He was at, he was 200, and I think he told me he was 200 pounds for that. Mm. And I remember I remember because he experimented going heavier uh, in his career, and I think there was a 2003 Olympia when he had the, 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 the Tom Platt's mullet. The mullet, And yeah. he was 218 for that. Mm. And it kind of, he got like last place, but he because he, he was trying to sort of you know, experiment were coming in bigger and he realized that, and like he said, the San Francisco was 2000, was it 2005? And he won that and he was, uh, and people were saying he was like 240. He thought they were, two, thought he was 240. He was 199 pounds. Still, man, Sean Ray better come back with something, man. He dissed them good, Chris. He dissed them good. Good. <laughs> you love all that, don't you? He loves all no, that. No, well, Sean Ray got to need a, he needs to do a comeback. He needs to say something back. Oh. Nobody can go on TV talking like that about you. You don't say nothing back. Well, Sean's, Sean's, uh, Sean can handle himself. Well, let's see what he... We have a lot of other guests on, though, so we maybe have to... Because we went for a long time now. That was Yeah, it was great. No, it's fantastic. Yeah, okay, we better wrap that up. This is a good, big episode. Yes, and we will be returning after the ad break. Big thank, Obviously, big thank you there to Lee big Priest for coming on. Big thanks to Lee on. Priest. Yes, so... Uh, yeah, did you, did you, did you, was it worth getting up early for? I'd stay up all night for this. <laughs> fantastic. It was great having him on. Yeah, it was good. Mm. It was good. Now, fantastic. Okay, so check out our break from High Tech Pharmaceuticals, and we'll be right back with our very next guest. Check it out. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> And welcome back to Global Muscle Radio here at the Pump Media Studios, joined by my co-host AJ, all the way from Norway, and we are joined by our very first female ever on Global Muscle ever, Jessica Padilla Reyes, or Reyes Padilla even. <laughs> Jessica, thank you for joining us. Okay, so you can hear us okay, everything okay? Yes. Good. Ah, oh, perfect. Perfect. For, for the people at home, this is our first female ever to, to be on the Global Muscle Show. So we're honored to have you, Jessica. Yep. First one. God, I'm so excited to be on, in live with you guys from so <laughs> far. Mm. So where, where are you coming from? Is it Puerto Rico you're in right now? Yeah. And I'm here in my hometown okay, right so, now. So, you, I mean, obviously the big news is that you won the Arnold Australia. Yes. So, so yeah. So you've been tra when did you? Because you've been messaging back and forth, and you've been traveling uh, right. back a few days, haven't you? Stopped off in Dallas. So it was a really long flight, but it worth it at the end. Yeah, yeah. So you stopped off. Did you say you stopped off in Dallas to see your sponsor? Yeah, because I was like, how you know that we we were like together in the in the Arno, Ohio. Mm -hmm. I was the uh, last a uh, week from from the australia doing the arno ohio yep. and then i flew from ohio to my home oh hang on sorry just lost one second I mean so oh hang on oh we've lost her okay let's try oh hang on we've got you back sorry we've got a bit of a connection problem there. So i repacked my bags yeah and then i left to dallas I work out with my coach and, you know, for him to see me, how I was looking and do the improvements that we had to do and work on to do the, the Arnold Australia. So he found like everything was just looking perfect in the way that we were like planning. Mm -hmm. And then from Dallas, I flew all the way to Sydney. Oh, wow. And then from to Melbourne. I've been catching up, keeping up with you on Instagram because I saw all the pictures of uh, you were out with a friend of yours out there. Is she Australian or? She, yeah, okay. she's from Sydney. I met Katie um, because she used to compete as a, also as a figure outlet. Mm -hmm. We did the San Marino Pro Show in 2016 mm -hmm. and I met her there. So she was like pretty excited for me to go to her hometown. Yeah. She, so she was like the perfect host for me in those days that i was there in australia yeah i saw the pictures of the uh, was it the um what's the big bridge the sydney harbour bridge in the background am i right like, like <laughs> <AJ. laughs> sorry lost you there again Go on. Uh, so at muscular development we follow all the classes and on the forums 
you are usually the person everybody says, who is this, who is this, who is this? <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit more about your career and how you turn pro and things like, and where you're from? Because not this is a, a mostly a men bodybuilding show. Yep. So our audience don't, maybe not know you so well. Can we talk a little bit, where are you from? How did you turn pro? How did you found the gym? Uh, what's, what's your hop? Tell us more about yourself. Well, um, first, my whole name, Jessica Reyes Padilla from Puerto Rico. Um, I started in the bodybuilding industry in 2013. My first year, I competed just in small shows, local shows in Puerto Rico. And um, I actually started like, doing this when my dad passed away. Mm. And I was like looking for a place just to take all the anger and um, the, all these emotions that I have feeling in that moment. So I just put it on the weight. And um, somebody came to me to ask me, actually, I was like uh, doing competition shows, which I didn't know anything about that. Mm -hmm. But I was like, very, I'm a very curious person. So I started like, looking for some information. So I was like very interested to um, start doing it. So a few months, a few months later, I just I did my first uh, show in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. which I placed third place. And then from there, I just won every single overall in my category. <laughs> I started as a figure. I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, start as a bikini and then go to figure. So I'm just starting from the beginning as a, as a figure outlet. Okay. So in 2014, I looked for information like to um, do an NPC show, which it was the uh, Tim Gardner Stravaganza in Tampa. Mm. So I did... Uh, uh, over 30 novice mm. and open and I won both um, the three categories plus the overall wow mm. okay so, so, I sorry, so, that was, so that was novice open and the masters is that over 30 over 30 sorry sorry over 30 mm -hmm. novice open and then the overall oh wow oh <laughs> that's, a, yeah. <laughs> that's a good day yeah. that's a good day yeah. So on my second, I did my first uh, national was the Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. but they didn't play me because they thought that I had too much condition. Oh, wow. For oh, yeah. the, which it was good because it's like, okay, well, so I just need to eat a little bit more for the next one then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in 2015, I did the junior nationals in Chicago and then was, was when I turned pro. So um, that was my, my pro car winning in the Junior Nationals in Chicago, 2015. Yeah. Mm. And then um, 2016, less than a year, I competed at the Vancouver Pro Show. Mm -hmm. That was my third pro show. And um, I won that show. So that was my first qualification to the Olympia, mm -hmm. where I played 16 plays on my first Olympia. I was like so excited about being there that I just went there and I was, I just want to like take pictures with everybody <laughs> and just for being there with the uh, with the figures that they inspire me and motivate me like uh like Nicole Wilkins yeah, that yeah. was one of the that I that I used to follow on Eric Stern mm. so me being on the same stage than her I didn't even care about placing I was just like <laughs> like enjoying the moment but then it was like more because i expected more from me and mm. i was like okay i'm here i got the opportunity to be not just here enjoying my moment but to other you know like plays better and do something with my career as an athlete so mm. um at the next year 2017 uh 2016 yeah no 17 17 uh, did the uh, Toronto Pro Show. Mm -hmm. I won that show. Mm. And then the next weekend, I did the Puerto Rico Pro Show that I also won. Okay. So I did it back to back. Mm -hmm. Wow. So another two and wins. I placed, yeah, I placed at the Olympia 8. Yep. Mm. Moving up. Uh, in 2017. Mm -hmm. So everything was, you know, like getting better. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I think a little bit more like challenge myself looking for more information about what the judges are looking in my category and try to make a plan to improve everything that I need to improve to um, to place better. Mm. 
So um, I was working with a coach from Puerto Rico at that time. But then um, last year, I I started like working with, with another coach. First, I started with Arash. He was like helping me my first, the first month of, of last year. Mm. And then I finalized like uh, my prep for the Olympia with Andrew Wu. So um, I'm actually with him. Mm-hmm. We did like a eight weeks uh, prep for Whoa. the Olympia last year with him. Oh, wow. And I played. Fourth, fourth, fourth yes, place. Yeah, yes. I was there. I was there. You look fantastic. Should have been higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What like that? So, uh, yeah, people expect like a lot of things from me, mm. and uh, mm. even last year. But I think that this is gonna be like a really good year for me, yeah. and um, I'm. I'm starting pretty good, don't you think, guys? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well, I, I actually I was at the Arnold Classic and higher. I actually yes. had you. I'm, no disrespect to Nadia Watts, she's fantastic, um, but. I, I did see it as between you and Sydney Gillen because Sydney is an, another one of my kind of figure favorites. I think you know she's got beautiful shape. She's a bit shorter than yourself, but um, I just I, it's such a kind of different sort of look. I just thought, well, it's going to be close between those two, you know. And obviously Jessica got third, and now you've obviously yeah. gone to the Arnold Australia. And how we, was that to talk yeah. to? How was it to Tell talk us. to Arnold Schwarzenegger? Was it like <laughs> how was that? <laughs> She'd love that. <laughs> Can you imagine? She is, yeah. He is the daddy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you see the picture she posted on, and I, I posted it on our Global Muscle. And she's yes, doing, yes, yes. Like, yeah. Arnold's there. It's like, wow, it's exactly how you'd react mm, with Arnold, mm. wasn't it? Yeah, so. And um, it was like really emotional, excited, not just because to meet him and, and for him to interview me and be there, giving me the, 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 the trophy, because I really respect him, mm-hmm. not just as an athlete as a human being yeah. and um, about his personality. He's been a, a person that inspire you to do whatever you want to do in life. If you put it your hundred mm-hmm. percent, when he decided to be a bodybuilder, he decided to be the best bodybuilder. Yeah. And then he decides to be an actor. Yeah. He was, he did it. <laughs> then he decided, uh, a governor from California, and he did it. Mm. So he's like, like a real example that if you keep your, like if you keep pushing hard in every single goal that you um, want to do and make in your life, you really w- can make it true. Like if you put your heart on it. Mm. So that's why it was like so emotional, and I feel like so good to actually have it in front of me. Yeah. Because he been like a really uh, uh, inspired person in my life, like to keep working on my goals. Mm. So when did you decide to do the Arnold Australia? Was it was it pre decided, but even before Columbus, or was it when you knew you were so close to winning? You know, like the Arnold Columbus. Well, to be honest, I had it on my mind since last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, I didn't want to like. I really want to do it last year. Yeah. And um, also because I knew deep in my heart that there were like some things that we need to fix for the Arno Ohio that we didn't uh, have time. Mm-hmm. And um, I didn't want to like not getting myself another chance to prove that I deserve better. Mm-hmm. So I just did it because yeah. I knew. Yeah. So even re- regardless of the placings in Columbus, oh. sorry, they broke up with that. So regardless of the placing in Columbus, which which look do you prefer? Because you were definitely leaner in the Arnold Australia. I mean, sometimes I've seen figure athletes experiment with different looks and the Arnold Australia just went all out for condition and obviously it was rewarded. So which, which do you prefer and why? Well, to be honest with you, I always have believed that figure category should be like a, with like like about an athletic look. Yeah. And um, not showing that more that much like estriations or that kind of condition because we have women's physique. Yeah. But the judges have sometimes depends of the of the show. Mm-hmm. They have like different tastes or. Mm like different way of judging. So I'm not even think about what I think that it should be. I always ask them what they're looking for and try just to be on a stage 
yeah. um, in the condition that they really think that it should be. Yeah. So I asked, I talked to them in Ohio. So they told me that from that show that I should be like a little bit thinner, like leaner. Okay. I mean, and um, I work on that. That's not a problem for me, mm. to be honest. Mm. I could be as efficient as I want to be. And um, I just want to like prove them that that I could be that lean. Yeah. You stayed, I mean, you said you started um, weight training, uh, bodybuilding, if you want to call it that, in 2013. Do you, did, was that a change, was that a turning point in your life for you? I mean, I know you said it was um, because your father died and you wanted something to channel the, you know, the, the hurt and the anger or whatever, or whatever it was. Do you, would you, um, would you say that it's actually enhanced your life now in, in other ways? Yeah, of course. Um, I, I have a background. I used to uh, do tracks. 100 okay. and 200. Okay. So I'm always doing for sport, but I was like doing it at, at that moment. I used to be uh, a fashion model. Okay. I used to be really, really skinny doing uh, <laughs> uh, music music videos, like with Daddy Yankee, Don Omar, <laughs> all the. Do you know who Daddy Yankee is? I haven't is? a clue who these people are. <laughs> you don't are. know who Daddy Yankee is? No, Come I, on, man. G-Unit. I don't know, I know who <laughs> these people Yankee's are. Daddy Yankee is very popular. You, you and AJ can talk no, to someone. No, no, no. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Go on, tell us. And fashion magazines and things like that. So I was like kind of really, really skinny. Mm -hmm. So it seemed like a challenge for me and like a big change mm -hmm. for everybody that used to know me as a model not being with this body. I yeah. used to have just 94 pounds of a muscle mass mm. in my body when I started. Oof. Now I have 133. Mm. Okay. So it's That's a big a lot difference. 40 pounds of muscle. So how, how tall are you? Because you look very tall for a figure. Oh, sorry, still. Sorry, broke up. Yeah, I have been improvement. When I first started, like I told you, um, I my first competition, I went 117. Okay. On then I add some muscle mass, and um, I was in 122, then 125, 128. Now I I get on stage in 133, 133, something like that. How, how tall are you, Jessica? Because you look quite tall for figure. Um, I'm almost five seven. Oh, five seven. Because it's funny when you. I think it's the structure of your your physique. You actually look taller on stage because I think it's because Sydney, Nadia, Latoya, they're all so short. But now we, yeah. yeah. they're like five two, five three, yeah, kind of something like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm I'm one of the highest one, like the yeah. tallest one in the figure class. So and also because when I get on that stage, I feel like a giant. So that's what I. <laughs> Go on, AJ, ask some questions. No, that's why when you walk out, it's probably from your modeling experience. Because yeah, you, when you yeah. wake out, you, when, you, when you walk out, we're like, okay, who's this? Yeah. The way you walk, the way you carry yourself. Mm. How are you going to use this to win, Miss, to win the title at the Mr. Olympia contest? Miss. Miss Olympia contest. <laughs> How will you do this? What's the plan? How are you going to win the title? Uh, well, that's part of the plan already. Yes. <laughs> I'm just work, I'm just working on that plan. Um, I think that I, I love to be different and I love to make the difference. Yeah. So I think that it's time like to um, change the bodybuilding industry and also prove that Latinas have uh, what it takes to be the champion of the Miss Olympia mm. uh, competition show. So mm. I'm here for that. <laughs> is bodybuilding become very big in Latin America now, isn't it? Oh, yes. And even in Puerto Rico now, mm -hmm. thanks um, to Team Garner Production, yes. we have our uh, pro show. Actually, there's a show in be, Puerto Rico now. Yeah, yes. it's going to be a pro show. It's going to be um, on May 24 to 27. Mm, okay. And I'm actually uh, the champion, and I got that title. Oh. So I don't know. If you could see me in another stage before the uh, Olympics. So she's looking to. So you're still. Are you. Me. Yes. Defeating my title. <laughs> Defending a title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you. I mean, have you, you've come up from Australia. You've done. You know, you've been prepping. You did the Olympia. You've done. It's a lot of prep. It's a lot of work. Have you ta are you taking any time off now? Or are you, are you straight back on the. So you're doing this show, by the way? You know, Giles, that it's like. 
I'm so hyper and I love, <laughs> love it. She loves it. And I'm so passionate about it. Like last year I did nine nine shows. Oh wow. Mm, wow. I'm used to it. Mm, you're hitting I'm your stride. Used... Hitting your stride. Now. Proper athlete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Myself, my body actually react really good on doing a lot of shows because I'm used to it. Mm. So to do like four shows this year for me it's nothing. Mm. Okay. And okay. Uh, to have a lot of to prove so i think that it will hold me like to keep in condition and look even better for the olympia this year mm. so so for the olympia i mean i know i think i'm trying to work out how you can improve at your level for figure is it about more muscle more le more condition less condition more balance what what really is the you said you've got a plan for the olympia to win the olympia what is your plan in terms of adjusting your physique if any Actually, I need what I need. Uh, I, I I know what I need to work on. Yeah. I know that I um, have to fix my back pose. Okay. That it's been the main mm. issue with me. Not because I don't have what it takes, unconditioned at the type or the type of body. Mm. It's just because I need to actually work more of what is my comparison. Yeah. Pose. And more the back pose. Mm -hmm. Perfectly, yep. uh, it's gonna be really, really hard. I'm, I'm gonna make it really, really hard. <laughs> for me, for me, it's more than enough that they keep the eye on me, yeah. knowing that they, they should be like aware. So yeah. I'm going with my hundred percent, and like I said. My body is used to do like a lot of shows, mm -hmm. nine, eight shows per year. So now, even this year, even mm -hmm. if I do four shows, mm -hmm. I have time enough to be working on my improvements yeah. and uh, relax and um, take it at like more like, like kind of like slow and let my body to rest. So it's going to be really good, a really good year for me. You are <laughs> gonna see it. You're just going to see it. And you're going to enjoy it with me. Yeah. See, I think, I mean, I'm really like my two kind of, I see the, the top two figure girls now. I mean, like I know Candice Keen is kind of retired now. I don't know what's happened with Latoya. So I kind of see you and Sydney as the the top two going in this year to the Olympia. I think you definitely, definitely have a better front relax than her. I think on the quarter turn, that's kind of her pose. That's the one she kind of dominates. And like you said, if you can improve on that back pose, then you're really, really closing the gap between you and Sydney? I think that that's, that's what I really need to work on. Mm. And also I will be um, working on get my back like a little bit more wider. Mm. And uh, I'm gonna be working on my, also on my glutes and my hands, mm -hmm. like to get it like, like uh, tighter from that, from to, uh, at the moment of the Olympia. And um, I know that I'm doing like really, really good in less than in a really short time with with my new coach, yeah. so now having like uh, more time on being working with him mm -hmm. and knowing knowing a specific the uh, details that we need to improve and change, yeah. I think that um, we are gonna do really really good. Yeah, I don't have any doubts. I'm I'm pretty <laughs> confident and, um, in the in the way that we are doing things and in the way that I'm gonna be looking at the end. I think that uh, people love my symmetry, yeah. that people even have connections with me. And um, like just guys, you guys are really the business that is so much more than just have the body. Yeah. You need to make people feel connected with you in every single way. And I think that people love me and they have been showing to me in the social medias Mm -hmm. So they really want me to win. They really want me to be the first Latina ever to win this show. Mm -hmm. And um, they have been supporting me in, in every single way. And that keeps me really, really motivated to do whatever it takes mm. to not uh, disappoint them in any way. Yeah. I think in terms of figure, I think when, when girls are looking at ladies, are looking, figure ladies are looking to improve their physiques, I think it's always the best, best figure girls like yourself always have the best shoulders, the best glutes, the smallest waist, and they always have to look good in that quarter turn. Mm. If they tick all those boxes, that's it. They are the elite. They are the top 
top best of the best mm. you know and i you know you, know, you certainly have <laughs> those, those attributes thank you thank you so much people really likes my symmetry and the way i look mm. they love the presentation that's something that is really important because i really feel confidence and people uh can feel that when i'm on stage mm. so that's something that i have that um being used to model helped me a lot mm. so uh I know, I know that I could get better and better. So mm. there's no doubt, and I'm just working for that. Mm. And I know that uh, people are not gonna get disappointed in the yeah. package that I'm. It's so, my team. So, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So you said, I mean, you said you stopped off in Dallas to see your sponsor. You messaged me the other day. Is is that the lady I met in Columbus at the hotel? Yes. Yeah. The, the, the short the powerlifter is, lady. The powerlifter lady. Yeah want to thank for and something that honestly is going to help me mm. because my mm. first um this is my six year competing and my first five years i was like doing it for me having a full-time job yeah and i'm also a mom mm. yep so it's even harder for me to do a prep competing that much yeah and if i to deal with it Trust me, now that I have yeah, supporters, yeah. the uh, Immortal Labs as my sponsors, mm -hmm. and they're taking care of me, um, so I could be able like to have more time to focus on my training and more, my workout and my improvements. Um, uh, that's something that really relieved me yeah. and gave me more time like to work in what I need to work on. Yeah, AJ, this is what she said to me at the, at the Columbus. She said, um, I've done three Olympias, uh, Arnold's, I've done all these shows and I've supported them. I've, I'm, a, I'm a single mom and I've paid for them myself. I've supported myself. And finally now she's got a really good sponsor and it's so good to hear Josh, getting that kind of support. I told you this in the beginning when I told you about Jessica. Well, I, wasn't... I said, Giles, <laughs> I look Jessica. I saw her yeah. and it, she is epic he she said, yeah. needs sponsors yep. she needs more publicity mm -hmm. because she is what the people want in a champion yep. and you see when she come on screen you're like oh <laughs> fantastic not in a so, hoodie not in a hoodie or you dress, hair up or... she dresses perfectly yeah. makeup is perfect when when she comes at stage mm -hmm. uh nails we... done nails done today check she, she messaged me today she was getting her nails done at one today let's have a look Getting your nails done? Oi, oi. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, uh, <laughs> there you go. It, so you don't have to tell me. I know. So yeah, yeah we beautiful. They, they're beautiful. Yes, yeah. yes. So we just want to have you on so the people around the world can get to know you better. Mm -hmm. Hopefully sp other sponsors see this. Uh, the IFBB judges mm -hmm. see this. Everybody see that you and we have, you know, who's going to be on this show. It's, it's you and Lee Priest. Yes, Aust another Aust well, Australia. That's a bit of an Australian connection there. So it's you are with the legends in this episode. Yeah, that, that is it's a whole package about everything. So um, they they really want to see condition in mm. in in a figure outlet, but they also want to see beauty, and yeah. I could bring both. What for? So um, mm. I feel even though that I have my muscles very very feminine and mm -hmm. um that's something that they just love because i have been keeping um looking feminine in in a hundred percent and um that's really important at the at at the end of it yeah that's what really matters yeah yeah okay just uh just <laughs> aj <laughs> Sorry. you got jobs all I'm, call, I'm calling aj jessica <laughs> well, <yeah>, well, hey. <laughs> nice nails no but, serious <laughs> oh, no but it's really bad Sorry, say that again. Right now. What? Why? Sorry, say that again. We lost you there. We lost you. We didn't hear you. Yeah, he's blushing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Me? <laughs> Why? Jones, are you blushing? It's oh, red. no. He's going bright red. <laughs> he's red. Get the camera on, Jones. Jones, you're getting it. red. Stop it. Stop it. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> uh, actually, my, no, no. Oh yeah, your jazz is getting red. Heart conditions uh, back. Also, Latinas, I have like a tan, like I have a tanning. We don't show that. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. yes. Thanks, thanks guys. I know you always knew you could back me up, you guys. Yep. 
<laughs> All right, then. No. Uh, sorry. Okay, AJ, no, would you I, like to? No, I would, yeah. Uh, thank, thank, thank you very much for being on. I think we've said everything that we yeah. we support you. The audience supports you, and uh, we, I hope you come on this show another time. When she wins the Olympia, of course, more than welcome. Just to open <laughs> your your doors for me, more than welcome. I will go as many times as you guys want. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay, Jessica, we're going to let you go and we're going to uh, finish off the show. And uh, thank you for coming on. And I'm glad you got Skype as well. We've got it sorted. Can we, can we get a bicep pulse? <laughs> they don't do bicep Can we poses, get a No, we don't do bicep pulse. If you want to do a bicep pulse. Can we pose? do a bicep pulse, Jessica? <laughs> can we get a bicep pulse for the camera? Or? She's, not, she's not feeling that. Go on then. Way! Not supposed to. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Ah, there beautiful. you go. Fantastic. Beautiful. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay, Jessica, we will see you very soon. And, uh, All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, ooh. Uh. Da, 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 da. Hey, Chris. <laughs> guys, guys. Chris, no, just relax. Chris, <laughs> I think we should not... Um, are you sure this is okay at home? <clears throat> <laughs> Of course blushing. it is. Yeah, yeah, no, I wasn't blushing. I was Chris, just, he was you blushing. Made, yeah, when somebody says you're blushing, you blush. No. Well, as people can see, a fantastic representative for figure. Yeah, huh? she's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, great. I'm yeah. happy she was our first female uh, competitor on. Yeah. She was, because um, me and Rosie ha had her on Muscle News Weekly a few weeks ago. Actually, it was you that alerted me to it, because I remember yes. her from the Olympia. I thought she was absolutely fantastic. fantastic. In fact, she, her and... It was her and Sydney that had the biggest crowd response at the Olympics. It was Jessica had the biggest crowd response. Yeah, her and uh, but those two, those two, and I, I see those two as the the front runners. Obviously, you've got two time Olympia champion, Arnold champion, but I really do see Jessica as the one that could close the gap. And now. a good point with the Latin audience. They love yeah, the, the you know, and, and she's her background as a model and all these things. Mm. You see her on stage, how she's, when she walks out, it's yes. like, whoa. That made sense with the whole modeling thing because she yeah. has a really fantastic. Because think like a walk and everything, it's like really. Really professional. You can. I, I, it makes sense to me that she's got that kind of training. And also, we, uh, the most important is not uh, beauty. It's her athlete, like the condition. Yeah. Because sure. she's not sure. only beautiful, of course, but mm. it's the she's always hard in shape. She's she a, got told to get less in shape. She's a badass athlete. She Nine is. shows in a year. She's like, ah, this is easy. Nine and shows. Like I said at the end of the interview, there, I said, um, like she, yeah, because she came, she came over to the hotel and she saw uh, she was at the same hotel. This was. Um, she, uh, the night of the show, there was, I was having food with Steve Blackman, Ron Harris, Victor Martinez, and it was all her sponsor team. What are you pulling face? <laughs> Stop <laughs> it! No, no, no. And she came yeah. and she she came over and sat with myself and Steve and us and uh, yeah and we and Steve said Steve kept saying, "Oh, you're so charming, Jessica. You're so charming." It was yeah. like yeah, but it was it was lovely, classy lady. And I really am rooting for her for the Olympia. So I really appreciate Me her coming too. on. And I'm, and like I said, she did a lovely update for myself and Rosie on the Moss News Weekly a few, uh, few episodes ago. Really good. It was, um, yeah, so it was absolutely 100% behind Jessica. Definitely one of the female athletes to look out for in, in 2019. Yeah, she was our, and, she's our, and she's been our first lady on Global Muscle Radio. Chris, first ever lady. Were you impressed? Very impressed, mate. Very uh, char charismatic and, uh, yeah. She's warm, uh, like warm. Yeah, yeah, yeah warmth. Yeah. 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 Not cold and... Yeah. Nice, nice Very... end to, uh, to an intense podcast. And great she has a sponsor now. Yes. I didn't get the sponsor's name, though. Oh, I forgot the name. It was that they do like a hemp type protein. Um, sorry, I, I do a, they do like a RTD and stuff. But uh, I was talking to the lady, little um, uh, powerlifter. She's okay. a, she's from because when she was in Dallas, I said, "Were well, you in Dallas?" I thought I thought you were stopping over the flights. Mm. She says, "No, I'm there to see my sponsor for a couple of days." So mm. they're really. I mean, I, um, she had her arm round. Um, at the when we're back at the hotel that the sponsor and she says yeah we really they really love her and they really want it they're really supporting her all the way to the olympia and beyond you don't know who daddy yankee is i've got a clue uh, daddy yankee you who's don't know that? who it is who's that? I don't know. Oh, okay whatever then do you know um yeah i do Tell Ozzy Osbourne is? <laughs> come on the junkie on <laughs> <I know. laughs> the junkie he bought me a tonka truck mm. when i was five have i told you that story have i told you the triple eight story <laughs> <laughs> Loves the trip. We out. No, 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 yeah, no, 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 no. Okay, no, let's let's. Thanks have... to Jessica. Thanks to Lee Priest. Fantastic episode. Um, it's Lee... certainly been it's certainly been an interesting episode. This and week. not thanks to the other person who. Mm. Well, there was. Um, yeah, we, we don't want even talk about it. No. Stop that. Yeah. Okay. And then we have some exclusive footage for YouTube. Yes. Yeah, we're gonna end off with. Uh, now we're only gonna show this footage at the end of this episode. This bonus footage. 
are on the YouTube visual version of um, Global Muscle. So we're actually not going to show this on the audio version, which is then out uploaded to iTunes, SoundCloud, Pandora, and Player FM. So we're going to finish off with a little bit of footage. Uh, we went today to Nathan the Ashes, Ashes Gym, only Prophecy 30 minutes gym. away. Uh, top. Top eight, uh, top, you know, top eight Olympia competitor, Very. one of the rising stars. He's only, you know, he's, I mean, that guy's not even hit his stride yet and he's already knocking on the top six of Olympia. Yeah, you love Nathan. Oh, Nathan. Pride of Britain. The pride of Britain and Jamaica. Jamaica, Nathan, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're really too really connected with the Jamaican Yeah, thing. yeah, of course. So well, if you are Jamaican, then of course you connect with the other guy who's yeah. from Jamaica. Yeah, so we had a lovely visit today and uh, and you managed to convince, should we, no, I don't want to spoil it, Nathan to uh, show us the goods because he's going to be competing in he nine weeks. Shirt off. Toronto, British Grand Prix. 280 pounds. He's solid, isn't 280. he? 280. And he looks good, looks healthy. Healthy, he looks... nice hair, skin. Sm he even smelt good. <laughs> okay. Yes, that's very important. But, I'm um, impressed. Yeah, so we're going to end off with the footage from uh, today, which was a nice little... And I think we should... Um, I think if we ever have another gap, we should go over and train. What's the address for people? Do you remember the address to give some plug? It's Prophecy Center. Prophecy Performance Center. Google Liv it. Liverpool. It's on Instagram. They've got their Instagram page and Facebook page. Yeah. And you got to go there, guys. This is a but gym for bodybuilders. We're, we're going to take you there in a gym tour, essentially. 80 yes. kilos dumbbells. Yes, and he's got he's getting 120 kilo dumbbells. We should have a, f a film there and we should have a lift off, Giles. Oh, me and you. 120 Let the kilos. best man win. Whatever. We can. Did you, did, you, did you hear what he said? He was. Because um, he was being. He's got 80 kilo dumbbells. Oh, and he did no, no, eight no. reps for shoulder press. No, no, no. Listen, I was paying more attention. He mm. did 11 reps. Oh, and he's, 11. Uh, he, he said, he says, yeah, they're too light. So he's ordered <laughs> dumbbells up to 120 or 125 kilos. That's how a real man does it. Yeah, no, uh, no, no bands and no fake weights like them guys on YouTube. Those yeah. I don't even give their names out. Front squatting six plates. Did he say he said on the in last week's interview, he said, I did seven plates, but I only got one and a half reps. He said it was too heavy. He said it was choking me. So, oh, I so want to train right now <laughs> and eat. A bit late. Well, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, we'll finish off with a little uh, trip to Pro Prophecy Performance Center. And thank you for watching episode 14 of Global Muscle Radio. And we'll see you next week. Actually, I don't know who we've got yet, but we will be getting those guests. Spots. More legends, more and big names, more rising stars. End this show with a Spanish song now, Giles. What? Uh, Since we just I, had I Jessica. I can't think of a Spanish. Baila more. You know that song? La, living Latina Loca. No, oh, come Rick, on, Ricky bro. Martin. Fly, fly. No, that's... Uh, come on. Living La Vida. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's one. Okay. That's worse than Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was it. Good episode. Yeah, fantastic. Big thank you there to Jessica and Lee Priest. And Lee Priest. And we will see you next week back on Monday for Global Muscle Radio. And we are out. Out. Hey guys, bit of a Global Muscle Special here. We're here at the Prophecy Performance Center in Liverpool with Nathan Diasha, <laughs> pride of the UK. <laughs> so Nathan's gonna show us around his new gym. It's only been open four months, so uh, you're gonna show us around? I'm sure what you guys think and have a look. So oh, it's the shoulder uh, <laughs> width. That's the most important area. Yeah. So guys, like, this is the, basically the pride I'm doing. This is the first ever Olympia jacket. You know, obviously, obviously you know, in my career I'll have many more, but it can't be the first one. As, as I showed you all yesterday, got some in the house, but this is, to me, the most important. It's the, it's the first one, you know, this is what, what I'll always remember. I've been, I've been successful right here. <laughs> Come on, it's all right, man. It smells very good here too, by the way. <laughs> it smells, fresh smell. It's not a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those little pumpkins don't smell like it. People think hardcore gyms are all black, dirty, dark and dingy, but remember something different. I believe a hardcore gym just have, you know, old-fashioned hardcore machines. But, you know, you want that 21st century look. You want it clean, you want it fresh, you want, you know, you want to be basically brand new. Hang on, hang on. Nothing. No <laughs> dust. No <laughs> dust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so all the, all the kit we've got now at the moment is all awesome strength. Um, 
I was out there last year with Matt Jensen. I think all the equipment's awesome. It's heavy as hell. Um, late on today, if you guys would have come later, we've got a shitload of Panatta coming as well. So we're just trying to improve and get more and more, you know, and when we, we, we will never refurb. We just keep adding and adding because, you know, if you've got the best machines in the world, why refurb? You know what I mean? So just keep getting better and better. We've got a very, very good selection of equipment here, but there's, yeah, you can see there's upstairs as well. Yeah, we just we just try to put it in rolls. We have a lot of people think it's a, you know it's a bodybuilder's gym, but it's but to be honest, it's not. You see, everyone, most people are the average person. So we made it a little bit easier since being in oxygen. I found it be easy to put everything in rolls, and I would see a lot of the gyms doing it. Yeah. So I see them all. So uh, what's, yeah. your, what's your favourite piece? Um, favourite piece after the humbler. You know this one here. This is this, this is certified by uh, Art of Strength. Mm. There's many copies going around, but you won't get you won't get nothing like this and. This is a bad boy, this one. <laughs> so this is probably... I like the, uh, the, the, the support tea bar. Right? Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm. People, people, you know, have a lot, of, a lot of the young lads and they put like 30, 40 kilo on it at one time. I'm thinking, yeah, it's easy. Nice. <laughs> put, 40, put 40 kilo on that. Yeah, that's like lifting it. It's the same as this one here, Charles, as well. It's the same as this, this piece. You know, even the likes of himself and Rolly, even myself, myself and Rolly, we're only pulling two and a half plates, two plates a side, maximum. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's what that's what's about. It's all it's all precision made. It's all made. It's all based around men, around big big people. You know what I mean? A lot of companies based the machines on you know on the average person, and, and you know. But we wanted to go to something more hardcore, more mainstream. And I believe our system is probably the biggest or one of the biggest um, companies in the world. You know, we got with the company guys to Panatta, Hammerstein, you know, thing like thing like this. You know, three good brands there. Yeah. What, so where's the uh, Arsenal from? Uh, Tennessee. Oh, Tennessee. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Tennessee, yeah. That's yeah, where yeah, it's from, mate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we're happy to have it. You know, the guys love it. They come in like fucking hell, you know. I didn't, feel, I didn't realize it'd be that heavy. I'm like, listen, <laughs> when you have a real machine and then you go back to your old, your old gym, yeah. you'd, be, you'd be lifting three or four times or more because you're used to lifting heavy, yeah. So when you go back to your gym and you're using the fake machine, and it's different. It's built to last. Yeah. What do you think, AJ? I'm just, uh, well, yeah, we, yeah. we were here before you came, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we have it. Like I said, we have all the sections, AJ. You know, I accept like everyone. I know. I know. Need to, I need. I know. I need to work on my leg game. So yeah. I have a lot. I have a shitload of legs. You know. So we, we, we've got more coming later. You know. I don't. I believe even though we have a lot of leg presses, every angle is different. Mm. So you're gaining everything from from a different a different angle. I like the single leg press. The uh, I've seen a couple of these now. We yeah. saw, I saw it at a gym down in. Um, well, it was down south, and it's the first time I've ever seen one of these. But these these are very getting very popular now. Very, very good piece of equipment. See that? It's like you can do one leg. Yeah, because you know, before that you start to use, use that machine, and the counterbalance is not is not right because you have to go to one side rather right. rather than you know parallel to the, to the machine. So you have to shift over on these mates. to just to just don't point like. So four months you've been open. Four, four months. months, mate. Yeah, four months. Yeah. Well, you know, happy? I'm happy. We're on as of now. We're on like think 390 members, something That's like good. that. That's so good. we're we're happy. You know, we're close, we're close up around 500. We don't want it to be, you know, a busy, a busy, busy gym. We want yeah. people to be able to come in, train, and then get off. You know what I mean? You want yeah. people to do your workouts. You know, we want, we want people to come in to train and achieve, achieve their goal rather than just come and take selfies. We want to take a selfie, mate. Go around the corner to your, to your local, <laughs> your local gym, you know what I mean? But yeah. we don't have that. We want people who want to train, want to improve, want to lift some fucking big ass weight. Yeah. <laughs> Proper Liverpool style. Yeah. <laughs> Shoulder press 80. 80. You shoulder pressing these? Like Shit. Yeah. So they're, 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 they're some heavy ass weight, huh? <laughs> Fuck. He's getting some, um, he said they're not heavy enough, so he's getting some 120 kilo dumbbells. <laughs> so I think I will start training her actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could probably roll them. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, just a cardio section. Some um, sun beds, physiotherapist. That's a good machine as well. Yeah, is that tricep? Shoulder, this one here. Oh, sorry, this one. This one's shoulder press. This, 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 this is a good piece. How do you do? Do you, do you hammer grip or do you do normal? Um, depending, so if I'm doing like some isolation, I'll do some front singular. So if you're front now? Yeah, yeah. Front and then most of the time I'll do, I'll, do the, I'll do the side, yeah. It's good though. You know, you have these companies, these corporations, 
you know, the hiring is going to the staff, but the gyms are still a mess. Yeah, you know, yeah, we're, yeah. We're only hired, we're only, we're only hired three or four people. But, you know, we're still, we're still getting there, like. Yeah. So as you guys know, I've just started the prep. And because I'm a lazy bastard, I got a, I got a, um, a Cumberland bike, <laughs> heavy Cumberland bike. So oh, you like the sit down, do you? Yeah. So what do you do for cardio then? Do you just do, do, you, do you mix it? No, mate, just keep my ass on that. Keep my ass on that. Oh, do you watch Netflix? Yeah. That's all I do, mate. Yeah, that's all I do. So Netflix and chill. Yeah, that's all I do, mate. Netflix and chill on the old Cumberland bike. Every day, six forty-five, and that's me. Should be fuck. Yeah. Do you do a lot of tanning pre-contest? Yeah, I probably with the Probably, yeah. Probably do. Yeah, it's warm as hell, mate. It's a fucking brand new sunbed, and it, wow. it, it literally it gets abused because we, we, we do like a sunbed course. We do ten pound for uh, forty eight minutes. Eh. Yeah. So everyone does fucking get a sunbed. Everyone's hating it. I might need. I need a bit of a tan actually. So. <laughs> okay, we're going to the ladies' changing room now. Come on, the men's. Okay. So as Charles said before, it's all clean. Oh, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's your isn't that your trade the. Fittings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we basically the whole gym built it ourselves. Oh, we had no trades when coming. We just built it. All this was non non existence. We built everything yeah. from scratch. That was your trade yeah, before yeah. gyms. It was like uh, yeah, yeah. kitchens or yeah, yeah. I was brick bricklayer and built the, the gym, a gym so, builder. So he built all of this in his uh, team. Yeah, and smell and it's fresh. It's <laughs> brand new. It's like the ladies' changing room. <laughs> it's, it's like a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we should just go for like a more, a more fresh modern look, do you know what I mean? That's nice, that's showers. Yeah. Nice, yeah. A lot of people complain, like you see these old school gym leads, you, can't, you, go, you, go to, you go to the gym, you can't even piss in there, it's that, mm. fucking, it's that dirty. Mm. At least in here, you know, you literally you should come out, you can come, train, have your physio, do whatever you do and get a shower, and nice. go to work, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 6am, 6, 6 till, I say 10, 30, our, busy, our busiest time. Okay, what, yeah. in the morning? Morning, yeah, oh, yeah, really? yeah. Oh, morning, okay. Because the area you're in, it's a lot of, um, a lot of corporations around, as you see, so a lot of them start between, between 6 and 10. So yeah. busy, like, right, buddy? Nice. Right. Oh, he's not coming, she's coming. Not too bad, dude. That's what we want to see. <laughs> the gym is, yeah. Sneak preview. Sneak preview. Sneak preview. <laughs> just started dieting, haven't you? Yeah, just, start, just started last week, yeah. How much are you up to now? Uh, got away this, got, got this morning, we were 283 pounds. <laughs> yeah. And that's a legit way, not these people say, not, <laughs> yeah, we don't want to say it on camera, but we had some. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this is going to be exciting now, huh? Yeah, British the train, Pro. The British Pro. Do. British Grand Prix. The main, the main focus was to bring the hamstrings up in the back because, you know, from the front, I believe in people, they're not from the front. Yeah. But, it, you know, the main, you know, the main tissue, the main goal of the tissue, it's just, it's, just, it's just the back, back and hamstrings. No point banging on extra tissue if it's not in proportion. The mm. front's in proportion. Just get, the, just get the back there and then mm. hopefully it's improved. Obviously Nathan's shown us around his new gym. Four months old, absolutely fantastic. Building quick. 25 more pieces arriving. Oh, yeah. He's getting, no. a bit, getting a bit argy, I'm argy. Get, <laughs> Because I get, I'm getting popped. <laughs> when we see Nathan's trick. He's, he's getting all excited because yeah. Nathan's uh, shown us what a 283, yeah. a legit 283 pounder looks like. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> big thank you to Nathan Diaz yes. for showing us around the Prophecy Performance Centre in Liverpool. If you're in the area, make sure you check it out uh, for this gym special for Global Muscle. Cheers guys, see you soon. <laughs>